except the agenda, or are there any changes or additions to the agenda at all? A couple under the agent's report. A couple of things under the agent's report for okay. later. One is um, the grist mill on Country Way. And then just briefly, the Conway, the Conway School meeting next week. That's all. I make a motion to accept the agenda with the amendments Jim just mentioned. I will. Conway School. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we're going to move to the RDAs. So uh, we have Duffy at 32 Old Oak and Bucket Road. Come up and be counted. Hmm? On August 13th, 2012, during their 6.15 p.m. meeting at the Town Hall, the Situa Conservation Commission will act on the request of James Duffy for a determination of the applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaw to install a chain link fence on property located at 32 Old Oak and Bucket Road. Situate of others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Jim Duffy, 32 Old Oak and Bucket Road. And I'm just looking to put a chain link fence in for my dog. That's off in the backyard. Okay. Um, Penny? Um, you're just showing the chain link in the front. What's, um, I, I, oh, wait, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. It, it's is, going that way. I'm looking at the house. Okay, the yeah. And yeah, so is, it, what we're going to do is, there's, that's actually a two-tiered lawn. There's an upper, upper yeah. yard and a lower yard. Yeah. And so we're going to do vinyl fencing, sort of facing the street along the front from the sides of the house out to the, the property lines and then back to where the property drops and then we're gonna pick up in the backyard with chain link along the, along the wood line and then return back up to the um, stone wall and up the property on the side of the property. Is that so what is the this, east side? This grass or woods up here? That's all grass. It's all grass. Okay, no, I don't. Yeah, actually I, I wasn't sure. I looked at the wetlands flags back in the woods but I couldn't get back there but I actually pulled out the, um, you know, they're just doing, developing the property behind right. me there. So I actually pulled out, and I'm within I'm within the 100 foot, but I'm not in the 50 yes. foot. No other questions. Is that is that line that you have coming across here, is that the, is that the 100 foot line? No, I don't, no, that's just the grade line on the, that, that, that was the, um, I, basically took that off the drawing that was done for the septic when I bought my house. So it doesn't show any, it doesn't show it. That just has some site grading on there. So you don't have the 100, the 50 or the 100 foot lines on this? Not on that, no. You but have it on something else? Yeah, actually, well, I, I just printed out, I, you know, when, when the um, folks were developing the property behind me, they, they uh, sent me the, the, so, uh, submission drawings and so I just actually printed those off today to see where the 50 and 100 foot is. I can hand it off you if you want to see it. Good. Yeah, please. Sure. So, so my, my house is on this drawing is right here and on this drawing I'll turn it for you the same way for you. So my house is actually just right here in the corner. So and Jim do you want to see? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's see, this is, where am I? 3A is out here, Old Oak and Bucket Road's here. So this is, this is the old Clap house that just sold and renovated. This is Cooper's house, and this is my house right here. So my, pro my property line, actually, this th isn't correct. My property line actually stops right here. And then this, so this is my rear property line. So this is the 50-foot line here, and this is the 100-foot line here. You can actually see it a little more clear, clearly, clearly on this one. So that's my house, 100 foot line and 50 foot line. And what's what's this line here? That I don't know. I think that's just a grade line. 
I'm not sure. These are, you know, these are submission drawings that, 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 uh, that the other people did. Yeah, I'm not sure what the red lines are. And I'd like to, I'd like to see where this is relative to the, to the 50 and the 100. Because I. Um, Do you remember the project that Chief Just, Chief Justice Cushing Highway, right by the Rotary? Right. Yeah. So um, this that, is the wetland. Yeah, that wetland is what his yard butts up to. Yeah, but my my sense of proportion isn't that good to move from one well, to the other. Well, those houses, part of it was in his 50s, so he's definitely in his 50s. No, 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 I don't. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't definitely, I'm definitely well, not in well, the 50. The 50 doesn't okay. come onto my property. Right. The 50 does right. not come onto no, your property? No, the 50 does not come onto my property. Also not going to really impact this is, yeah, so this is the property line. Here's the 50 line. Exactly. This is my house here. So my property line stops. Yep. It's about 15 feet, I, I would say, off of the 50 foot line. I can't imagine that there's major traffic of uh, wildlife over there. Just so everybody can hear. Do you have to cut any vegetation? No. No, it's, everything, is, everything is all lawn back back to where the fence goes. Is, it, is it that rope that, there's a, there's a, rope, yeah. there's a rope that yeah, goes I, along the back side. Yeah, I sprung a rope. The lawn goes out and then the vegetation starts. So it's right at the interface between the lawn and the thick vegetation, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's yeah this, is, this is Joe Clapsel. I don't know, yeah. this is Joe Clapsel's house. So he, when I bought it, it's always been cut back, you know, to that line, as long as, long as my son keeps it. Right. What confused me was there's no stone, I didn't see any stone No, wall. there is no stone wall back there. I, that was incorrect yeah. on when they did then when they did the work for Joe, when we, he sold the house to do the septic, they showed a stone wall back there, but there never was one. It only the stone walls run north south. I think that's right. Did you go out there, Tony? I, yeah, I went by it and, and I looked in, but I Sorry. I couldn't get a sense of proportion of distance. But you know, if the if the fifty isn't there, I mean, isn't. Are you going to have a a, a, a gate in that fence? No, not only that rear property line. He doesn't want the dog taken off on the rear. Then, uh, okay. And, and it is already destroyed. It is all grass. And, and right. definitely, That's my nice. well, it's not oh. near the fence. Does anybody else want to see these? Yeah, it's, it's just, that is funny. It was just a coincidence. Today I was actually cleaning up some old files on my computer and I came across the files that the engineers had sent to me because I had inquired about the development behind me and I plotted off those you know yeah. to con and it just happened I was like oh geez I forgot I had the hearing today and here they were confirming that I was you know where I was relative to the 50 and 100. Yeah. I'm gonna let Todd finish up seeing how Jim's son works with us and uh, <laughs> and I work with Jim. Oh, is there anyone in the audience for 32 Old Oak and Bucket Road? Jim, do you have anything? No, no. It's been the fence is stopping before the vegetation at the right. interface right. between the lawn and the, and the vegetation. Out of the 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I make a motion and throw it. Negative three. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's good and negative. Okay. okay you can go Very good. Go put my fence up. You, you can, can take this too. All right. Thank you. You want your files? These? Yes. Uh, all right. We'll restart. That. That's fine. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> DPW 68 Captain Pierce Road installed gasoline dispenser tank. You didn't? Mr. Vanguard? Mm -hmm. All right. How are you this evening? Good, thank you. Fire away. Okay, good. This is good. Um, when you get your map in front of you, a little photograph looks like this. Uh, this is a picture of the Department of Public, or the Highway and Grounds Garage at 68 Captain Pierce Road. We're basically looking southwest here. Uh, the line that is across the top of your photo is the, um, the current railroad tracks. Uh, if you know the area, Egypt Country Store will be in the upper left-hand corner. 
Um, the gray building on the right is the highway um, car barn or garage, if you will. And adjacent to that is a diesel dispensing tank uh, that we use for trucks and school buses. Uh, the police have asked that we uh, install a gasoline dispensing tank uh, for use by the schools uh, for their handicap, uh, for their smaller vans, uh, for the police and for several other town vehicles uh, because currently uh, in the area there is no 24 hour, seven day a week uh, gas dispensing station that's open during all emergency situations. Generally what happens when there's a snow emergency uh, local stations shut down. Uh, when there's uh, power outages, local stations aren't able to provide dispensed fuels. So from a public safety standpoint, the uh, police chief has asked that we uh, consider putting in a gasoline dispensing tank. The location of the tank would be um, immediately adjacent to safely set aside uh, the proper distances from uh, the diesel tank. Uh, would be the same distance from the uh, basically the Jersey barrier concrete wall that is behind and to the right as you're looking at the picture. Uh, the area is completely disturbed uh, and in fact is paved uh, as in years past. Uh, it happened in years past, I guess, not on my shift because I never would have done that. Uh, <laughs> what? Nothing. You're, you're perfect. Sometimes I look out, see? <laughs> um, so anyway, what that's what we're asking for is a negative uh, determination of applicability so that we can install this tank. It will be um, used by police, as I said, and the schools, as well as some of our trucks and vehicles that are gasoline powered. The security around it is that it, uh, the fuel is only dispensed when a, a key that's on the key ring of the appropriate vehicle is inserted in the dispensing device is then logged in, then the operator has to log in the number of miles on the odometer of that vehicle, and then it uh, tracks how much how much fuel is assigned, has been used by that vehicle in the past, and then uh, the, the various departments are charged for the fuel that they used. In addition, there will be um, a security camera in the area that, that we were intending to install anyway, and we will be installing as a result of this. Uh, during any kind of construction, the only construction that's required here is that we need a uh, concrete foundation uh, poured underneath the tank, which would be essentially the footprint of the tank. Uh, of course, during that time, we would use hay bales and other things to make sure that no, none of the digging and uh, that none of the dirt left the property, or nor that any materials that were removed would be uh, will be disposed of will be disposed of responsibly. Um, the other thing I was going to say was. Uh, this project is being done as a turnkey operation by Northeastern Petroleum Services. It's a state contractor who uh, has been awarded the bid to do this throughout the state. Uh, they have extensive experience with this sort of thing. We decided rather than doing a lot of hand work on our part, we would turn this whole thing over as um, a turnkey operation, holding them responsible for um, proper conduct of this um, and all the elements of it. And uh, in the end, the town will save about 60 cents a gallon on all the fuel that is used by the police and, and other vehicles in town. And that 60 cents comes because we are sure to get back tax credit and also by buying in bulk, we'll be buying at a much cheaper price than buying at retail, as we do today. Do we get a key? Uh -huh. yeah. And you need a cover. You need a cover for the camera when you're using yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought Jim I and uh, Paul. I don't, yeah. need a, I don't need a key. I have a bobby pen. Okay. Penny? No. Um, I just have one question about what would happen if it leaked or spilled. Is okay. there any type of... Yeah, the, the tank is uh, what's called is a double tank. I, I read that in there, a double. Yes, and, it's, uh, and between the two tanks is filled with a uh, cement-like product so that really? it can't leak from one to the other. The concern... Unlike the diesel fuel tank, which is a tank within a shroud, uh, on gasoline the requirement is that, the, that that there can be no empty void into which gasoline would leak because of explosive nature of it. What about spills or on the ground? Uh, yeah, through that? dispensing, there is uh, there is there are no provisions at this point for that. Would it be? It's, it's, it's you're going to have to add, but the rest of the year. 
it's all asphalted, yes. Right. I mean, Except for over towards where the frag is. Right, and it's all that's all towards the front, uh, you know, in the passageway there. Do you keep any containment stuff for booms or absorbent pads or anything like that? At yeah, we uh, uh, oil, you know, oil soak. Yeah. You know, um, we fortunately haven't had any kind of dispels. All the dispensers now are equipped with all sorts of shut-off devices and anti-spark devices and. But you do get the material on site. Yes. And if not, we will. That could be a condition. No questions. You're, you're not required to, to put a... Uh, no, nor are we required to put in that anti... that stuff that many gas stations have, you know, the halogen yeah. system. And, and, these, and this is state requirements that... I guess that's if um, civilians are dispensing randomly. You, you have to do that, but you know this would be the police and fire personnel. Trained. Halon, halogens of light. Halon is a fire suppressor. Okay, Halon. Thank you. You're good. He's good in many <laughs> obscure ways. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jim, it's interesting that the the state has just um, changed the requirement. You know, on on gas stations, there's that rubber boot that goes over the tank when yes. you search it. Yeah, the vapor recovery. Yeah, the state just uh, the EPA or DEP just issued a uh, an edict that those are no longer required because so many vehicles, the percentage of vehicles are now that internally do recovery is so high. So oh. that was an interim move by the state. Hmm. Uh, to require that vacuum boot until enough of the vehicles, which were which require vehicle fuel recovery, uh, that's interesting. Fuel recovery, so that's all. Huh. Save us a little money, but. Okay. Al, Al, did you say that there are there are there is emergency equipment on site in the event of a spill? There would be. There is uh, fire emergency equipment on site, and we'd have we have oil soap. You know the stuff to pick up uh, spills with. You know what that is? What's that? Absorbent. Yeah, absorbent, absorbent materials, and, right. And thing. As, long, as long as you're in the right position, if there is a spill, you know, you're within 53 feet from the wet one. <coughs> I, would just I, like, I would just like to ensure I, that. I was going to suggest that maybe part of the condition, I know, like at a couple of the oil companies in town, they keep right adjacent to where they fill the trucks. They have a couple of boxes, and in the boxes are some... Those socks and yeah, there's yeah. Some, some things that they can somebody can grab in a hurry and yes. mm -hmm. um, put out to contain that or soak it up or whatever. I, and then I, I guess I assume that who's ever be some sort of training or risk training required, mm -hmm. so people understand what to do because they could be the other odd times. But it mm -hmm. makes sense. Did were you going to deal with these independently? I know at one time I talked with Kevin about the salt barn. Are you going to deal with that? That's a different project. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I just, you know, I just, I just think we should, we should have a condition. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's at the garage already, but just a, a condition to have the materials nearby. You, you do training. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're on site. But I think it would be good to just have a condition that the materials be nearby, just because of the close proximity to the wetland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also the close yeah. proximity to say, all the vehicles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the buildings of yeah. the department. Yeah. yeah. Which are. Uh, yeah, it just makes sense all the way around. But, okay. Yeah, um, okay. We can put that in there, and then maybe um, Penny can go down and just quiz the first couple of people using it, and if yeah. they <laughs> don't pass, then. Okay, then I'll let Al know. I'll bunk up. Okay. <laughs> all right. I mean, Is there anybody in the audience um, with regards to the gas storage at the DPW? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Horton, 10 Buttonwood Lane.
Engineering, representing the property owner and applicant, Scott Horton. We're here with a request for determination of applicability for a new single family home that Mr. Horton is proposing at 10 Buttonwood Lane. This project was before the Commission uh, in April as a septic repair project for the existing house. Since then, Mr. Horton has purchased the property. We're proposing a new house and now this new final. The property line here is shown in bold on this plan. We have Buttonwood Lane to the west, Small Marsh to the east, residential properties on the north and south of the property. Salt Marsh Line was delineated by Brad Holmes, shown in blue. Off of that, we have the 50-foot no-disturb zone and the 100-foot buffer zone. We're not proposing any work within the 100-foot buffer zone. There'll be no change in grade, no work proposed at all in that 100-foot zone. The work that we are proposing is located in the western portion of the site. We're raising the existing house, putting in a new house. We have a new septic system. Um, grading and driveway, all outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, however, a portion of the site, as you'll see shown with this orange line, a portion of the foundation is located in the flood zone, AE. This is per the new flood maps that came out July 17th. We're not gonna have any habitable space. Uh, this is an on-grade slab foundation at elevation 11. The flood plain is at elevation 10. Uh, it's constructed in full compliance with the Mass Building Code. Wetlands Protection Act uh, requires compensatory storage if you're doing uh, work within land subject to flooding, but where this is land subject to coastal storm flowage, you're not required by the regulations to provide any sort of compensatory storage. We don't feel that the construction of this portion of the foundation, which again is only a foot high, will impede any storm waters. Uh, we're not uh, within a velocity zone, and we are taking all of the roof runoff and directing it into subsurface drywall chambers to promote recharge on the site. I guess I'd turn it over if there were any questions. Okay. You are using the same septic that we approved. The approved septic system was for the existing house, and it was in the 100-foot buffer. Yes, that, that's right. So we've taken all of that outside the 100-foot buffer with this plan. Because so, the existing house was up at the front, you know, didn't comply with the front yard setback. Right. And so we had the septic behind the house. Now we have it in front of the house with the new layout. Okay. I was getting confused because I, I knew there was some yeah. issue. Yeah, you didn't do it yet, Well, yeah, no, the septic was not installed. <laughs> it was permitted, but not installed. Yeah. Have you been to Board of Health? Yes, this has approval of the Board of Health and the Zoning Board. You said it's in the AE zone? Correct. So is it supposed to be elevated over a certain height in the AE zone? Or? You're supposed to provide a minimum of one foot of free board, which we have. Elevation 10 is the flood plain. We're at so elevation 11. You said it's a slab? Like it's the slab, slab is below the grade, though. It's, 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 an, it's a slab that's one foot above the surrounding grade, so it's, it's an elevated slab. There's no, there's no sunken portion of this foundation. Is this the house at the end of Buttonwood, like out of This is end? the second house on the right. There's a little house there right now that will be torn in. Okay, yeah, it's next the to the big one. We went to Horton's house again. Oh, I went to the end where we had... There's a new house it. going in at the end. Yeah, and I thought we had proved something up there. Oh, okay, so yeah. I was looking at the wrong place. This is right. a tiny little run house. All right, because the other house has a full foundation, and that's why I was confused. Okay. No, this will be just slab on three. Oh, no questions. Okay. Two. Um, actually, just a uh, just a correction in your favor. Okay. I think that one foot free board is for the first floor. What we're, what we're trying to do is in the, in the B zone requirement to go two feet above the floor starts all member, but in the flood plain is generally the first floor. Yeah. So what we're really trying to do is get the living quarters one foot above. You're well above yeah. that. No issues. 
yeah, the first, yeah, the first habitable floor, yeah. which will be at <coughs> elevation level. Right. Uh, I did notice one thing: the, the tree that we got down in the in the different foot that was that was there in the last this filing. One? I believe there was a tree there in the last filing. I'm showing it from my survey. If it's not there, it's news to me. It's not there anymore. So I can. I can tell so, the owner that we will replace it. The two. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. But, you know, possibly, you know, possibly on the on the side of the wall, up by the lock would be would be fine. I think that would provide a habitat for uh, avian avian species on the marsh edge. Okay. It's not there. <sighs> Never know. What if a squirrel were to live in Jim? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Good dinner. <laughs> Anybody in the audience? This is um, number Buttonwood. Ten. Ten. Number ten, Buttonwood Lane. I make a motion for the agreement. Second. With two trees being agreed. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Hadley Golf Club adjacent to 451 Hadley Road. I don't know, I had misplaced a couple of these readings, but I'm going to start here because Mr. Homburg is there. Um, on August 13th, <laughs> 615, meeting in the town hall. Situation. Can you go around again, Bill? You have to put the ring around the rose and he's gone first. <laughs> It's not a pretty <laughs> sight. <laughs> well, 650 Jeez. in the town hall. Such a conservation commission will act on the request to athlete golf club Inc. for a determination of applicability of Massachusetts weapons to weapons bylaws to construct an accessory building property located adjacent to 451 Hadley Road, situated about as another interested party is invited to attend. Hi, uh, Bill Orenberger. I'm here from uh, Maribito. An electrical, I'll talk sort of, but in essence, I'll the uh, this, is the, this is to replace the other snack bars. There's been a lot of vandalism at it. There's actually going to be lockdown gates, but more importantly, it has two handicap accessible bathrooms. There aren't any other the clubhouse, any handicap bathrooms on the entire site of the property, and there's a good opportunity to do this. I think Paul will talk. This is in the, this is in the floodplain. It's not near any wetlands, uh, wetlands vegetation. We already have a determination that the sewer, there was, we were here for determination before to get the sewer in here, and, and the town is, and the town contract is working on that. So I don't mean to steal your thunder. Um, this is the uh, limit of the 100 foot uh, buffer zone from the boarding vegetated wetland, and also the in the bank of the existing uh, work that was underneath the road. The work under this RDA would be from here back. Um, there's three utility lines that go in the fairway. That's the cover operation. There's water, and sewer, and gas. This area here, the, the fairway area, is a proposed uh, accessory building. It'll be 20 feet wide, 32 feet long. We're uh, proposing a slope around it um, so people can access the building on a fairly flat hill. Uh, this is all. Existing lawn and grass for the fairway. Um, once the building constructed, the area in blue will be returned back to grass. Um, this is in the land so that the closest storm forward. The uh, elevation on the new map that came out July 17th is elevation 10. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're, we're going to fill from the existing grade up to elevation 12 around the building. The building will be about the existing grade. Again, this will be used on a seasonal basis as it is for the cost purposes. Is that on the presentation? Okay. Which is that? Yeah. 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 Um, does uh, the um, equipment to do the construction um, fall or will that just come and go 
where they've done the trench, or do they have another access to get out there? Or? They, they can come. They can come in off of. Uh, they come on for wigwam on that, or do they? Oh, sure. They they can, they can go wigwam. They can come. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, they probably come over the gravel road on wigwam, yeah. and and then it hooks into this. As you go out to the end of wigwam, then there's an asphalt. There's an asphalt cart path that actually runs down. And not directly, they're probably within you know 100 yards. The other thing that was really helpful, just for whatever it's worth, is the Hatherley um, Country Club was willing to give the town an easement or actual piece of property when we did the Gannett um, easement. Easement. So without that, we'd be pretty stuck right there. So we appreciate that. Any motion? Anybody in the audience? Yeah, I was just curious, was Bill taking this pro bono so that he could use the handicapped bathroom out there? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hopefully I'll be off credit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I make a motion. That's very negative. Great. Second. Second. Go to get second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, um, McSherry Brothers wants one and two. Can we do those? Are we still on with that? No, that's, that's continued. That's gonna, it's going to be continued. The wetland, the wetland delineation uh, checked by the commission's consultant hasn't taken place yet. I saw some we'll, banter going back and forth. Are you? So we're still not there with. We're 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 back on track with it. We've, okay. We got the correct. Is Steve Ivis the, the consultant yes. for that? Okay. Yeah. We'll be going out, poss possibly going out Wednesday morning to uh, to check the delineation. Okay. He, the, the, he just couldn't find the correct up-to-date plan, which we did finally get to. It, it. has been confusing. <laughs> yes, it has been. Okay. He has the correct plan in hand now. So do they just till the next meeting? Till the next, I think, the, I think the next meeting, yes. Yeah. We plan on going out Wednesday. Okay. Do you have a time? Okay. Nine. Nine. I make this a motion Wednesday. to continue to share it. One site. Lot 1 and 2, 218, First Parish Road, to August 27th at 6.30. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Diamond Development, Winchester, Lot 1, 59 Holland Street, new build, septic. Is there, can we do those two together? Lot 1 and yeah. Lot 2? So, um, this is a continuation, right? No, we, we had, for the record, Steve B. Yorkland, um, we had Board of Health approval on this before. We were waiting for DEP numbers to come in. And I believe we've got DEP numbers. They come in about a week after the meeting. Um, the only other thing that was outstanding on this, I believe, um, we were working with DPW to do that drain improvement on the line that goes on the side of the property and we were able to work this out with them. They've seen the plan. They have no problem with it. Um, it basically, I, about a week ago I had a plan in the office. I don't know if anybody had a chance to see it, but when we construct a drainage basin we generally put in um, a head wall with some wing walls on it. And if you've, some of you have been out to the site, it's basically just a pipe that comes out of the ground out there uh, with no safety cages over it or anything like that. So uh, this is basically going to be constructed or fixed just like a detention basin would be. And on the plan, it shows a riprap area where the uh, water will go into once it comes out of the head wall. So it basically finishes it the way that uh, a drain should be finished. Um, so we put in a supplemental plan as part of it. And that's it. This is only on lot two, not on lot one. Um, and there is a note on the plan that says that this will be installed uh, in accordance with DPW and they will inspect it as the drain is getting fixed. That's pretty much it. Is a copy of that, do we have a copy this, of that? Yeah, there's a couple copies in the office. They've been there since last Monday. Um, I have a couple more copies if you want to look at it close. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the only other thing that we will do is once that drain goes in, we'll carry our mitigation over to the property line. So we'll put some wall planes <coughs> in for that, just so that there's a full buffer all the way across the back with the mitigation we had proposed originally. So we'll, we'll continue that over. Anybody else? 
Oh, we're waiting for we Did we, this baby. And how about, the the how about the other lot? How about the other lot? The other lot was just waiting for a DEP number. <coughs> okay. Uh, and the only other thing I'll mention, we we are personally going to be involved in doing all the mitigation in that non-disturbance zone as well as the drain. So okay. we'll stay on board until it's all planted. You said we're still waiting for a DEP on, no, we have on two? Both of them we have. Yeah, so, so we have that in Board of Health. Okay. Done. Okay. There's going to be two conditions put on in the two suggested conditions in the order. One, one, I would suggest that for any project that requires working on DPW property or an easement, that we have something in writing from the DPW that says they agree, they agree with the design. That could simply be a condition. I know you, I know you've worked with them already. But yeah, but we should but have a letter. Absolutely, yeah. For, for any for any project, so okay. We sh so we can put that as a condition before they begin work that we just have something in writing that DPW, and I know they did already, but it's nice to have something in writing that they approved it. And two, I believe you proposed to do the mitigation plantings before you begin begin work, which yeah, I think is also a, an excellent condition to put into really all the projects that require some type of mitigation planting that the plantings be put in first so I think this is that was a good proposal on your part yeah it's a little unusual because I mean I want to be involved in doing the plantings on this so for us to take that area I don't know if that's necessarily the same on every project that comes in it definitely works on this one and we have no problem with that condition it says the plantings will go in first um, the only other thing I would mention is I have had numerous conversations with both Al and Kevin and Sean regarding a letter coming from DPW. They were extremely hesitant to provide a letter, but they said, we're going to inspect the work. We, we have no problem with that. I wish Al was still in the room. To me, it seems like a simple thing to get the letter. They have told me flat out they are not going to write a letter because if they do, every time something comes up, Conservation is going to want a letter from DPW, and Kevin just says yeah. that's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Well, we're yeah. going to but we'll 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 so work that, but we'll I'm between a rock and a hard place. Well, you might have to sue him. Well, I, again, I'm between a rock and a hard place. This is the punishment you're to, getting uh, for doing an, an improvement for free. <laughs> it's it's probably it's seven thousand dollars worth free. of work on the drain that we're putting in, and DPW is going to inspect it. And you know, we own the property where the drain is going. Mm -hmm. So DPW has, a, has an easement to be able to drain water there, but technically we own the land where that's going. So okay. it's, it's a little unusual, and I tried for the last two weeks to get something. I know Kevin came over and talked to Jim, and I saw him afterwards, and he said, I'm just not going to write a letter. You're not going to write any kind of a letter? Or He's not going to write a letter, but he'll inspect the work, and I have a... a will he write a letter on. saying that he will inspect the work? <laughs> there you go. No, we, it's, it's on the plan. The approved plan says DPW will inspect the work. So if I can't get them to inspect it, it's a pr that's my problem. And the work is on their property. Right, the work is on my property. The plan. Why, would you, why, would you, why would you wait to inspect something that DPW will say yay or nay? Why construct it before you get the okay from the DPW if it's their drainage pipe. We'll work that out internally. Yeah. That's not, that's just unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, tr I tried numerous times to get a very simple letter done just saying well, it's no problem. We'll, we'll take that up. We'll take that up. Okay. That's it. Uh, anybody in the audience? Yes, sir. I'm John Whitaker. I'm the director of butter this property. I would want to add my two cents worth. I think the town has significant liability. That's a town-owned drainage system. Uh, the responsible part, they will be for the next couple of centuries. If anything goes wrong, they don't want to start the suit. I assume time the development intends to sell the property, and but the town will always have accountability and liability. Um, obviously, with children living next door to this drainage system, property next door, I have concerns. To me, the right way to do it, you might want to check with your town council to make sure, is for the town to take full accountability and sign off for the work that the government's going to do. It just makes sense. I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for Diamond Development and their capabilities, but that's a town system, and they have the accountability chance to eventually break down as it has in the past because the flood or God forbid the science and the or something of that nature. Therefore, I think the town manager or the director of public courts should give formal approval to the development of the newspaper. 
Well, we, that's what we just said. It doesn't said. seem like it's rocket science to write a five-line letter. Well, that was the thank you. Thank you for that. That was the discussion. Jim's pointed it out. It'll be in our letters, and then we'll, we'll take it up with DPW and see how we get to that point. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, it's not reasonable for a person to be stuck between two boards. However, we need to know that cover out work that the DPW has accepted this. So that's kind of what I'm saying, sir. Thank you. For Thank you. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um Maybe we'll jump to that. Okay. Yeah, I, I did. I did see the revised plan, and I and I did see the notes, and I did talk to Paul um, Shea, the technical consultant for the commission already, and and he does agree with the with this delineation, with the revised delineation. Okay. So what's that? Um, do you have any, any no. anybody no, anybody in the audience? So wetlands delineation for um, Hillcrest Road. Hillcrest Road. Is there a number? Right. Okay. I make a motion to close. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Salamando, 8 Dartmouth, restroom boardwalk. On August 13th at 6.45 p.m., the Town Hall City Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 136, Section 40, Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700. Town of Citrus Code of Bylaws to amend the order condition issued under DEP file number 68-2049 regarding the application of South River Partners LLC Mike Salamando to install a restroom on the boardwalk on property located at 8 Dartmouth Street, Hamarok. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Mike Salamando. And uh, I sent you out a plan, and we had uh, Merrill uh, put it on the as-built plans. And uh, we have uh, today just to uh, say I, I think this is the best place for this uh, for the bathroom uh, to support the, uh, the docks uh, because this is uh, the best way for uh, to make something work or enforcement is to make it convenient and accessible. And this is primarily, it is uh, for the boaters. And uh, although many of them are people who are union owners, we do have uh, it open to the public. And these are for, uh, it's, uh, I think it's the best, uh, the best location and the best way to support using the facilities. If we take them off, if I, I mean, both of my neighbors have uh, marinas, uh, uh, well-run marinas. They both have uh, they both have bathrooms, public restrooms, uh, for their guests. But a lot of times the, the people are still uh, relieving themselves off the back of. I mean, I look on my porch. Right? It's unfortunate, but they you know just don't bother because number one they have to travel such a distance, That's and um, or they just take it and sometimes it they just take five gallon buckets and throw it over. And um, I think. If you make it accessible, this is the best way to enforce. You know, uh, enforce just keeping the rivers clean. Uh, it's it's fairly simple. It's uh, 
It's a pump system. We're all we're into our uh, we're pumped right into our hard system. And it was required to me by the uh, by the by our local board of health to make one uh, available. I thought this would be the most advantageous place for it to work. So I just want to backtrack a little bit. We approved a couple of pilings. You came in and asked us because the pile driver was there or yes. there were some circumstances. So we approved your putting in just the piles and then you had to come back for the bathroom. That's correct, sir. And the reason that you have to have a bathroom now is because originally when this was built, the slips were all for the condo owners and now some of the slips will be for no we were originally uh, no we originally okay. were going to the uh, to use uh, we knew that we were going to take the restaurant down originally when we had this we used the restaurant used the restroom in the restaurant okay okay so then we I made a deal with the uh, the local and we we had it in writing that we were going to take uh, we were going to use next door we were going to share the bathroom next door and I was going to improve that and I was going to build them another one uh, to expand their facility. Uh, that was fine with Brian, but uh, the landlord, uh, after, you know, Brian was fine with it, but that, and he's the renter of it, but the landlord canceled our arrangement. Okay. So we were between a rock and a hard place. So I, I did check with the DEP, um, and they said that I could put a Johnny on the spot, and that would be fine. But um, our local board of health decided that she wanted to make me put a, uh, a hard and fast system in. And so, uh, and it would be a, a town requirement. So that it would supersede the DEP's requirement. So I said, okay, if I'm gonna go and I'm gonna spend this amount of money and do it, I wanna do it right. And if I'm gonna spend the money and make a hard one, let me use it, let me build it so it'll, we'll use it. And, and it'll be accessible to the people that are going to use it. And I thought this was the, the best place. Okay. That's the long and the short of it. I'm going to just one minute. Okay, I, my question is on you know, the off season when all the floats and everything comes up, what happens to this? That's when we're more, most apt to have storms, the northeasters, right. in the winter time. This will be completely drained, blown, completely closed down. Closed down. Drain. Like right. There's all back backflow preventers, so nothing co can go back. It's just like a regular system in a home. Okay. It's well supported. The pipe supports every seven feet underneath there by four by sixes. Okay, it goes off the whole length of the dock. That's what I have underneath there, and uh, and that uh, there's there's nothing. There's really very little that can go wrong. There's always something can go wrong. Well, there's always something. That's why, that's why I said nothing can go wrong. Sometimes there are things that yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Am I correct? The pilings are already in? Yes, sir. Yes. I've, I've been there. I know the area very well. And again, pardon me if this is a stupid question, but it's totally self-contained. It's going back into the regular system? Yes, it goes, it shoots, it, it's an ejection pump that shoots it right down there. We have a manhole already built I'm to aware. receive it. And we have it, uh, it was already, uh, inspected by the Board of Health. Okay. What kind of system is it? It's a pump system, ejection pump system. Into a septic? It goes, goes into a bunch of chambers. It goes into a chamber, and there's a... There's an on-site septic system. Yes, there is. For the community septic. For the community. For the okay. 14. So the that's 14 where it's going to drain, is into yes. the units. Yes, and then it goes through a whole bunch of denitrification systems. Uh, there's a hundred... I'm people. mostly just concerned about the pipes that connect from the toilet out on the dock to the septic system. It and you said up, there's it, a fail safe in there, some sort well, there's, of. There's, so it kind of, there's a backflow prevention, so it can't ever go back. All right, so it can't come out of the septic. Right. But could, in the event of flooding, water go into the septic? So say, well, say one coming. of these boaters that's so brazen as to urinate off of the dock goes drunkenly and crashes his boat into this thing, no, can't water getting into the septic, flooding out the septic. If there's a flood, could this break and have water go into well, the septic? Well, it's only going to be one tank. Right, yeah, this pier is really high. Yeah, it's, it's, it's way up high. It's, it's way, way up, up high. high. You, no, but, it, but I, our, 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 fine. our exposure is one, is, is one small tank. It's like one or two flushes. That's our exposure because that's, that's how big these tanks are. They're not that big. 
but they work on a regular basis. It's just like if you had one in your basement. It's the same exact thing. Like if you had it has to, an ejection right, it pump. No, it's, it's only this I'm just, I'm, I'm just wondering about the, f the pipe that goes from the injection system breaking weathering, wearing down, and being exposed, draining mm -hmm. into the river, It'd or... It'd have to be an awful big boat. I, it, no, be, I'm, I'm, I'm not being facetious. It wouldn't be a boat. We've got, right. we've got six by 12s, and then All right, on, so, on the side so of it... So it's, it's in, large in, enough that a boat's not going to crash and break it. No, they'd have to break the whole pier. May I ask one other question? Unlike Brian, are you pulling your pier, uh, the docks every year? Uh, Brian doesn't, so... Brian doesn't. I, I pull all my fingers. I keep my main dock. Okay. So there could be traffic there, but you would be closing the facility in the winter? We close it in the winter. Okay. We close it in the winter. Okay. Thank you. I, I personally think that there's a practical and substantially economic alternative and that in the beginning you were not opposed to having the restrooms off of the dock and now they're going to be on the dock. And I understand that the potential for impact is not tremendous, but I guess to me, putting a bathroom over a river is not a good idea. It doesn't protect the interests of the axe for pollution, for protecting the shellfish underneath mm -hmm. it, or for storm damage prevention. In the event that there's a large storm, a hurricane, a flood, on a moon tide, I mean, there's all sorts of variables that go into this. And it's just, if it was convenient before, then it's just as convenient now for them to walk off of the dock. And if that's the only, that's the only reason that I've heard from you is, is that this is a good idea, is that it's better for the boaters. And I, that, that argument just doesn't carry weight for me, considering in the very beginning you said you were going to have the guests go over to the other marina next door. So they were going to have to walk off the dock and go to the neighbor. It was just to fulfill the requirement. Right, but the requirement from the Board of Health didn't say you have to put the bathroom on the dock. It's no. on the property. No, it did. So you could put it anywhere in this undeveloped property. Is that correct? I mean... There's a few places I'd like to put it, but I, I, I can't do that. But. Well, I mean, it's, it's a, when you first came in here, the project wasn't even halfway finished, and you could have easily put it somewhere else. I just don't think this is a good idea. I don't think it protects the act. I don't think it protects the resource below it. I think it's a, a bad idea. Well, I don't think it's a bad idea because if, if, that, if there was a storm, okay, and it did reach the elevation of 12.5, most, most of the septic systems in, in Hamarok would be covered in water. Mm -hmm. So most of, most of them would all be destroyed. But one. that doesn't mean that we should create another source, that for we have tank? control. For, for, I one, know. for one small tank? Right, but there was an alternative from the very beginning that you could have put a bathroom somewhere else other than now this pickle we're in because your gentleman's agreement fell through. I don't that think you it's had a with your, I'm, I'm just trying to We are it. in a pickle because Why? we're about to permit a, a, a bathroom over the river, and there are no other bathrooms over the river in Hummerock over the South River. So this will be the first, and it's going to be there for 100 years. How long? And who's going to take care of it the way you're suggesting you're going to? What if the piers begin to rot and somebody it's in disrepair? I mean, there's so many things I can think of that are what ifs that don't make sense about this. And I, I, I don't want to argue with you about it. I'm not going to argue with I, you. I just, I just feel that it's a, a threat to the resource. Well, I respect your decision. I said my piece. Um, I don't have a big problem with it. The biggest thing is, and we could always condition it, it's just that some people were concerned about winterizing, but I'm sure you can do that anyway to protect your pipes and... Everything's going to be drained. Right. They, if I understand the way this is going to be done, it, the, the drainage line is back to the shore anyway, right? Yes, sir. So even if you if you didn't have a pumping system you the, the drain would be back toward the shore in any event that's correct is that correct that's correct. well it could, it, but typically if uh, if this were installed as a gravity system the pipe that would go from these bathrooms would be substantially larger and in order to get enough pitch 
right. for that it would have distance, to. that pipe would be dropping. Um, my, I, I think. So what happens? My thought, Frank, is is the only time that you're talking about gravity would be in a major storm or something along those lines, after uh, after the dock is no longer uh, operational, and you're not going to have any fluid, if any, you'll have little, if any, fluid in the system at that stage anyway. Well, my guess is that they're going to have to put some sort of <coughs> antifreeze or something. They're going to have to put in this and then pump that through. It gets cleaned out. We blow it. it it's or blown out. It's right. blown out. It's empty right. for the winter. Yeah, it otherwise, it would be frozen. Right. I guess where I was coming from is, does it have to be out that far on the pier? Could it be closer in uh, to potentially mitigate some of the problems of, of, of being over the water? Well, I do I, think I that mean, we, we brought that up. We did discuss this when, we, when you came in and asked for the piles. That was one of the questions that we had is why was it all the way out and why wasn't it on the land? Or, and I can't recall your answer for that at the time. But if you rip that whole pier down in a storm, whether it's halfway out or all the way out, it's... I'm, I'm just... No, but I think yeah, Todd's... Oh, go, go ahead. I, uh, what were you, what were you just well, no, I think Todd's question is, or, or point is, you have mechanical equipment, toilets, all this sort of thing. We know in our own home that a toilet can leak right. or a pipe can crack or some other thing can happen and if that happens there's going to be some affluent right. that's going to wind up draining into the river as opposed to coming right. out on shore. I don't disagree. So I think to his point it's like well why why do we have to have that exposure? What it means is that someone has to walk an extra hundred feet or I, I don't know how long the pier is. It's 142 feet. 140, so someone has to walk another 142 feet to use the bathroom. Well, that's to why I brought but up to, the to, idea. But to Mr. Right. Salamando's point is, uh, and sadly, people are lazy, people <laughs> are lazy and, and hopefully by putting it at the, you know, I don't know what and they do. Is it? Yeah. There's also cleaners involved. You clean your toilet with bleach. Yeah. So these yeah. bathrooms are going to get cleaned. And it's a public restroom, so the standards are probably higher for how clean it has to be. I hear Todd, and I understand his concern. If there was a holding tank out on the pier, but nothing's being held there from what I'm understanding, it flushes, it's That's going right. right to land. Well, it, one or two flushes, a float valve, a valve yeah. comes on. Right. Yeah. If and it is this, though, you, you have a hundred gallon tank on the pier right. holding to let let loose. If something does let loose it's gonna be No but it, but but any but sort of it but is any a sort of failure. Yeah. It's no, a it, building in the riverfront and it's, there's yeah. no other buildings on any piers on the salt. But it is a pump and it yeah. is mechanical equipment yeah. and it no. can fail. Of course it can. And then until it gets it, and the same thing happens in someone's house. When this sewage ejector fails in someone's basement there's a certain amount of affluent that winds up on the floor yeah. and has to be cleaned up. Um. Frankie, aren't, aren't we arguing against, and I, I don't remember putting the extra peers in and, and Mr. Salamando coming. Mr. Salamando came in and the, and, the, and the urgency there was that there was a pile driver on the river and, and his hope was to get these piles put in. And we quite honestly said to him, you can put those piles there, but it's not a permit to build that bathroom. Right. You, you know, you're, it's your peril to decide what you want to do. We, right. we, okay. We're more than willing to let you drive the piles, but we weren't. We had part of the same discussion. We did. Yeah. Like, like Todd said, there's other options here. We're doing this for the convenience of the people on the dock. You know, there's other options here. You know, how about signs and cameras saying? You know, don't use the dock, and you're on video, this and that. Walk the 150 feet. You already came in from the middle of the ocean, so I don't know. I'm just saying there are other options. Mm -hmm. What, what, what I'm it, saying. Mm -hmm. um, but but that is sort of the 
the that's balance here is, that's it. is you want right to have people, you want to make it as accessible and as easy to use as possible. So then, do you have more issue with people not using it? I don't know that there's an equation we can figure out for that. When you discuss this with the Board of Health, did they have any particular? They don't care as long as I put it somewhere. They, they want you to have a bathroom. They want me to have a bathroom. So they didn't care where the bathroom was, they just wanted a bathroom. Right. So I wanted to use it. If I was going to have to go to that expense, I wanted to do it and do it the best way and the most, in your, I, what I thought was the best place. In your opinion. It's not the cheapest. No, it's not. It's not the cheapest, believe me. But it, it was where, it, if I'm going to spend the money, I might as well spend it where it's going to be used. I know that sometimes goes against, uh, I just thought that that was the best thing, uh, I, honestly. And everything I've done on that project has been with the, uh, with the intent on doing it the best I could. I took this step. Can I just give me one second. What we typically do is try to debate it among the members, and then we ask okay. the audience for their input. Okay. Does anybody want to add anything, Jim? Um, what's the What's the date that it would be closed? Excuse me. What's the What's the date that it will be shut down? October. Uh, when When I uh, October tenth. Usually Columbus. Most Most everybody pulls their boats out right around October tenth, mm -hmm. or Columbus Day weekend. Because you know, northeast northeast storm season begins, so we could put a we could put a cutoff date for, for it to, for it to be shut down. Uh, we can we can also put conditions in it that it would be you know be dra you know drained, closed, and I and I would suggest it's probably all I, I, your point is well taken about cleaners. One thing is the effluent, and one thing is the is the cleaners, which you know bleach and other toxic chemicals, which would kill organisms. The effluent would won't necessarily kill them. It could be algae blooms, but the cleaners I think is most important. There's a, there are there are organic cleaners I think that we that that we can investigate to use to prevent the toxic chemicals from potentially leaching out okay. as a condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so take them out. yeah, but it's where we have no control over what happens once this is permitted. I'm not going to be out on that dock when they clean it, and I don't think anybody else here is going to be, not for the next 100 years or 200 or even 10. I know. Point, or point three well years taken. that yeah. I'm appointed to this board. I. Yeah. Well, if, if, we if, if, it is to, if it is to be approved by the commission, we can at least condition it yeah. to do the best we can, which we do on all projects. If, mm -hmm. if it's, if it's but it's a continuing condition, which we have been trying to... Similar to pesticides and fertilizers on lawns. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's no way. There's no way of. of yeah, there's there's no that enforcement either. of it, so it's. But it's a, but it's a good <coughs> pesticides and chemicals that people put on right. the lawns. We prohibit that in resource areas or close to resource areas. It's an educational component. Mm -hmm. it's the, I think it's the best we can do, <coughs> short of going out there and requiring receipts. So okay. if it's approved, at least we can take that next step. Sure. So anybody in the audience? Ma'am? Well, and you just, you need to state your name and address as. Uh, Karen Hatch, I have property at 31 Central Avenue. And this is at 33 Central Avenue. And um, my concern is a couple of things. One is, if he's allowed to put a toilet out on the dock, you're gonna start a whole thing. Why, why can't you? approve the other people that have docks all the way down from t down to the end of Hummerock. I mean, you're starting a whole precedence there for one thing. The other thing is that water rises. I, I have a home where the street can be fairly dry, but depending on the height of the sea or the ocean or the river, it rises up under my house to the point where it comes maybe four inches from the top of it. So you, this is a bad place as far as water rising and getting into the system. It's really, really wrong. Um, I just have never ever seen on a dock anywhere a toilet. I haven't. So I agree with Thomas. Yeah. 
the only thing, if just if, to deal with the elevation piece, if they were to put this bathroom at the end, like right on the land or at the end of the, the dock, chances are it's going to be at the same elevation. Um, we s have elevations that are given to us um, by FEMA as their best um, Practices. practice of where things are going to flood. I don't know what the elevation is of your home, if you've already elevated it or if it's not, but, but they set these elevations to make sure that things are, are above what they consider f uh, flood events. So I'm assuming no matter where it is, um, but, but your point's well made. Um, you know, all of a sudden, if there's a, a whole bunch more um, outhouses out at the end of the dock, it's... Or buildings, for that matter. I, I don't know what the... Do you know what the flood elevation is of the... Yeah, her, the elevation her house is at elevation 9. That de the dock is out there at 12, 12, 12 font. Right. 12 no, I, I, I don't have an issue with the elevation. I think that he's at the correct elevation. And, like, again, if, if it were to be located on the land, we'd, we'd want it at the end of the dock at, up at that elevation. So um, it, it's more a matter, is it sensible to have it out right. over the water? I wish I could agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> you never hung with my friend. I could say this. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Roger Kent, 27 Central Avenue, on the to the property. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, we, it took us a long time to clean up the South River. And uh, to put a toilet over the river just doesn't make sense to me because of the <clears throat> things that he brought up that they could, pipes could crack and whatnot. Mr. Salamando is going to build 14 units there. Some of those slots, or most of those slots, are going to belong to the units who all have bathrooms. So I don't know how many people we're going to accommodate out on the, on the dock, three or four or what. It's not that many. And I don't understand why that thing has to be out of Okay. Jim, question. <clears throat> are this are the slips exclusive for the condo owners or is it open to the public? It's 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 both open to the public and it's uh, and also condo. Not every condo unit uh, has a slip. Everybody rents the slips. It's open. It's an open. Uh, so they're open to the public. It's open to the right. public. Okay. Like it's in the, there's no condo uh, documentiums. Chapter 93 doesn't allow that. Chapter 91. I mean, right. So they can rent out slips, yeah. So we, we, we rent them to ourselves, we rent them out to the public. Yes, sir. <clears throat> those, those toilets might be here if he builds one. It's going to be there for, like you said, 100 years. Mike Salamander is going to be gone once those 14 units are gone. And anything he's saying today, how it's going to be kept and all that stuff, is out the window. The only thing we can do is when we permit, what, whatever we permit, we put these orders or conditions. They get recorded at the registry of the deeds. So our orders remain on the property, but oftentimes people don't recognize them. You know, in some cases now we're trying to actually get small signage um, put up so that whatever is important in those orders, um, w and I think whether this bathroom's out on the end or it's up here, um, the, the idea of maybe biodegradable cleaning products or whatever is, is a good one for something so close to the river. But um, y your point, again, is well made, that eventually someone else is going to be looking after this and whether they keep after it that way is, is a concern. Um, sure. Um, my name is Suzanne Crowley, and um, I live in Karen's house. Um, uh, my father rents that house, and I've been living there for a short period of time, helping him out. Um, however, I've been from Hummer, I grew up in Hummer. Um, I'm 48, I was born when I was 48. My grandparents actually own the property that Mike owns now. Um, it was the Hummer Lodge at the time. 
And so I remember when I was a, a child, I remember, I remember like, you know, lobsters. We were able to lobsters in the river, and the river was so nice, and we grew up that way. Um, and you know what? My grandparents even did, they had some issues with the sewer lines there. As the restaurant got bigger, I remember um, the sewer trucks would come in and we'd have to pump all the time because the sewer septic system wouldn't take it. And all the smell that those kids, you know, it got, and it got more and more as the restaurant got old, you know, bigger and bigger. And the septic system just couldn't handle it. And honestly, God, my dad said to me, it was an awful thing that they would, at times, have to just take the septic system and just let it go. And it went into the river. And I've seen the river, you know, because they couldn't, and with the tides that were high, it, it just couldn't support it. Now I understand, you know, we've got a great septic system, and I'm sure it's got everything going, you know, it's in a different location, and what have you, but, you know, you talk about the tides, I've seen the tides, you know, so high. I've been back and forth here for the past 48 years, and I understand that, you know, when something like that happens, it can go back into the river, and they have released. My dad said, we released that into the river. I've, I've seen the river, just go to, it, it, it was, there was some bad things going on in the river for the past 10 years. I've come back just recently in the past like eight months, and I am so overwhelmed at how wonderful the river is. I mean, there's, there's so much shellfish life back there. There's just, it's just so much cleaner than it's ever been. So, you know, in, for me, I just, I'm not, I don't live here. I'm, I own a house in New Hampshire, and but it's just a, it's a sentimental thing for me. It means a lot to my, um, you know, my Karen and the people that have lived here for a long time. And it means a lot to, you know, the, the river, just the, the whole, the fact that it's just looked so nice. And I think that this is probably, you have to be careful. I just, and there's something else, I know I'm there. So I, I heard the other day some people arguing about their toilets backed up in the units. Um, and then three days later, the alarm was going off at 5.30 in the morning. I'd get up for work early, and I didn't know what it was. I thought it might have been a gas leak. I didn't know. Um, I did make a phone call eventually because I had a neighbor walking by. I'm like, do you hear that? It was a very high-pitched noise, and we couldn't hear. The birds weren't even coming around. I mean, it was just, you know, I don't know. What, you know, there's a lot of construction going on there. They're, they're putting the pilings in there again, and it's rocking houses. And, you know, you, you just, you got to be careful. I don't want a gas leak or anything. And when I called the police just to let them know that, they said um, that they knew right away that it was a gas, um, a gas, something, but then, I'm sorry, not gas, the sewer, the septic system. Yeah, there's an alarm, and a, a, a pump yeah. set, and a so pump set. fine, you know, and they said to call the, um, they called them down. So, I mean, you know, we just we have to be careful, be careful of the. But that alarm is the point that a lot of people make that these are safer because there's a bunch of well, float good. switches and, and when they malfunction someone's made aware by a, a noise and a light and that sort of thing so it would get re so annoying that someone needs to repair it that yeah. was the alarm that was the septic alarm yeah. and there was a there was there was a cross on the wires and they were the, that's sure. all it was there wasn't any backup but that's what it does sound like if there is a problem and uh, uh, I didn't hear it till like when I got up at five. I know. Uh, I, no, five. Was the, the, the damn was units, the, with the stretch code, the units are so tight now, you don't hear anything. Okay. I, I didn't hear it. I said, what the hell? I got up. I, and, well, and they'll just wire all those alarms into your unit. And yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's yeah. what it is. Steve, did you have? Yeah, um, Steve Bjork, and I'm not a rebutter, but I've kind of been watching the project. And originally, um, if you remember, I was kind of against seeing the the uh, bathroom go out on the dock, but I think if you have a, a marina that probably has, I don't know, 50 boats in it maybe, through, through Mike, there are about 50 boats out there? No, 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 no. there's 16, 16, 16 how many of those boats have bathrooms in it? Uh, probably two. Two, so there are two boats out there that have bathrooms directly yeah. on top of the river, Yeah. which probably have switches that they can just hit a button and discharge into Absolutely. the river if the motor's chose to do that. So the only thing I'm thinking is it's probably safer to have the association handle you know this this toilet out there rather than having people discharge you know into the river very easily. If they're not gonna walk Well there's some the serious fines. I mean we can't control yeah. that and, and there are some very, very serious fines and concerns. But you're right. I mean every one of these boats that has a facility mm -hmm. on them it's supposed to be pumped out. I mean, now there's, there's pump out boats for this, and 
you know, to, to try to help people or keep people from, you know, discharging either too close to shore or, or on, on the dock, you know, there's, there's a lot more things available for them to pump their boat out. But all of those things happen on the water all the time. I mean, there's a boat on the river that's going around and servicing all these boats. Um, you know, they have facilities right on them and they get pumped out right there. So it's not like, I guess it's a novelty that, it just adds one more element, a uh, potential element for some pollution. But again, is it better to have it readily accessible or? Well, I think if, if you choose to condition it, uh, and I understand there's a couple different things. Obviously, nobody wants to look at this thing, I'm sure, if they're, if they're in the butter. I think it may be more environmentally safe to have it where Mike would like to have it, but I would put a condition in that if it's not used during the winter, that in the, in the spring, before it's operable, that it's inspected by the town. So when he opens it back up again, he, you know, somebody goes down and looks at it and makes sure it's okay. We'll get a letter from DPW that well, they're going to inspect the The plumbing yeah. inspector yeah. can go out when he, when he operates and he, mm -hmm. is there water on the docks as well? Mm -hmm. With water and electricity? It's, it's, look, I, I, I'm a resident now. I live here now, all right? Now, you could say I'm going to leave or I'm going to die. You know, I, it's true. I'm not going to be here forever. But the, the, the condominium association will own it. And I know I swim here in the river, all right? I mean, and I shell fish in the river, and I fish in the river. And I do, a, I do a, a quite a bit in this river. It's, 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 my, it's my best behest, all right? It's in my best regard, my self-interest, to make sure that this is in, and it's everybody else who lives right there and looks at this thing. And I mean, the, your best, your, your best uh, uh, bird's eye view is uh, are the people that live right on it. And they're the homeowners association, and they're the ones that are going to own it. I turn this all over to these folks, you know, uh, at, after the 11th sale. Even though I'm still a resident, they still have the dock. It's owned by the homeowners association. It's in their best best interest to see that this thing is maintained and and uh, and kept uh, in in spitshine condition. Oh, I mean, we got a few more hearings to do tonight. So. Um, do we close this as an amendment, or do we vote it? No, I have no more information. Give me a motion to close. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We can. Will. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So a closing essentially means we take it into consideration and we make a decision as to whether we approve it, deny it, or approve it with conditions. That, that's how we do that. But no more information can come in. It's just now deliberated by the board. If, if, if the project is approved by the commission, there's a 10-day appeal period. And do they let the abutters know? No. The, the, um, the decision will be made at the next meeting. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Um, Kelly, twenty-five River Street, septic. Yes, Christine Kylie. Kylie, Kylie I'm sorry. Sorry, Sure. So we were just looking for a board of health, okay? Right. Okay. So can we close this? Yeah. Was there any other issues? Yeah, that was the only issue we went for board of health. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do I have a motion? Just, just save Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So what happens next? Uh, I, you know, um, we have your orders here. I'm going to give you orders tonight. Gonna, uh -huh. so not, tonight some, not tonight. We need to make copies after tonight. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. 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 What are they mailing to me? Uh, oh, you can come pick them up. Wednesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday. Pick them up. Is that correct? Yes. What time are you? What time is? I, I'm working in Boston. I mean, okay. well, well, yeah, that's fine. Is there some people been telling me that after I get this, I have the neighbors have 30 days? Uh, there is an appeals period. Yeah. Ten, ten, ten days. days. Ten days. Ten days. Ten days. Yeah. And they're notified. 
They, the clock just starts nope. running. They have 10 days to appeal and try to, if they have a problem with it. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have a, your, your engineer or contractor? Can they pick it up for you or? Um? No, I see my engineer's not here and I happened to go online and see I had a hearing tonight. Okay. So i um, just kind of trying to find out because I'm not getting any information from you. Okay. I just want to know what I have to do. We'd, ma we'd mail those orders to Mrs. Kiley? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Or, we need to report them as a registered I need to report them. Okay. okay. Yeah, and it, it'll, it'll tell you that. You have so many days to record the orders. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have a contractor yep. install the septic system. Yep. And before the contractor starts, he's got to contact the commission. He should read those orders. Okay. And one of those orders is that he'll meet with the agent to make sure that he's fully aware of everything that's in the order, siltation and all that okay. sort of thing. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Martin, 50 Lawson Road, septic repair. On August 13th, 2012, 655, the Town Hall Citra Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Thomas and Catherine Martin to repair a septic system on property located at 50 Lawson Terrace, situate of others and other interested parties are invited to attend. submitted to the Board of Health uh, and approved by the Board of Health. The plan, as you'll see here, shown in bold, this is the property line. The property consists of 35,458 square feet. It has an existing four-bedroom house on it. The wetlands were delineated by Brad Holmes in April. You'll see Brad Holmes' line in blue. This is a bordering vegetated wetland. Off of that, we have in red the 50 foot no disturb zone, and in green the 100 foot buffer zone. All of the existing plumbing exits the rear of the house, so at the rear of the house, we've tied into that plumbing with a new septic tank and new pump chamber. Those are located 69 feet away from the water and vegetative wetland. They were pulled up as close to the house as we could uh, while maintaining a 10 foot setback from the house. The leaching field is entirely outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. It's a pressure dose leaching field in the front yard here. The location where we have the tanks, this is lawn surface right now. It will be restored as lawn surface. Uh, so it's really just a temporary disturbance for the installation of the two tanks and the force main around the house. Around the tanks during construction, we'll propose a uh, 12 inch diameter straw wattle stake just to prevent migration of any sediments toward the wetland area. Um, DEP had no comments on this. We're not located in a floodplain. We're not in any habitat. Anybody in the audience for Martin? Well, we appreciate you getting all of that out of the wetlands. Uh. Yeah. We try when we can. Yeah, the swimming pool's better off. Yeah. <laughs> You'll um, take the pool out, I, too? I make a motion because I don't know. So, favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank Thanks Thank you very much. Uh, Kennedy, 3 Milton Street. Exterior handicap lift continued OK from the Board of Health. How would the Board of Health have it? Oh, we were waiting for... Yeah, just the Board of Health. Why would the Board of Health have a... I have no idea, but that's what I wrote here. Why would the Board of Health... I don't know oh, I know why. Work. It had to do with moving one chamber on the septic system. Yeah, that's right. They had to take, for the footing, they had to move one of the chambers. That's what it was, and they needed... It says it's okay. I don't have any votes. 
Cut the number yourself. was the B D number. Um, it, and it did come in. It's number four, 14 on our correspondence. deterioration. Oh. So can we close this? Yeah, make a motion to close. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. So now, um, is it DeGreg DeGregio? Gregorio. He DeGorio. Sorry. 100 Greenfield Lane in Ground Pool on August 13th at uh, 7.05 p.m. The Town Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Constitutional uh, Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Edward D. I can say it. Um, to install an in-ground pool and properly located at 100 Greenfield Lane, situated about as another interested parties are invited to attend. For the record, I'm Al Loomis from McKenzie Engineering, here on behalf of the D. Gregorios. They are out of town. They had a long planned family vacation. They submitted a letter to the commission. I don't know if you have that. I have a copy. I have a copy. I should read it. If that's the of the commission. Sure. To address to the commission, dear chairperson, snow and conservation commission members, thank you for your consideration and review of our request to install an in-ground pool at our home in Citra during our scheduled August 13, 2012 meeting. We have authorized the professionals of McKenzie Engineering Group Inc. to appear on our behalf this meeting as we are out of state on a long plan family vacation. Please know that we are happy to appear before your board upon our return and to answer any additional questions which you may have if necessary. In 1996, we acquired our first home in Citroën on Brook Street, then relocated to our current home in the summer of 2005 upon the birth of our second daughter. We are invested in our immediate neighborhood as well as in our town. Both of our daughters attend to in the school where Ned has been employed as a teacher in its upper elementary level for five years. Jennifer maintains a domestic relations litigation and mediation practice in Marshfield where she assists many local families. We support many town endeavors such as the Citroën Animal Shelter, Citroën Community Christmas, and the Citroën Public Library. Our daughter, daughters participate in town sports and Ned has served as coach as well. We have made a long-term decision for our daughters to grow up here in Citroën. When we first acquired our home, we worked hard to beautify the existing lawn, gardens, and patio space with deliberation and re with respect to the natural areas surrounding our property. Each project that we have undertaken has been environmentally friendly and designed to work with the existing landscape of our yard. We have maintained and improved garden beds throughout our property using numerous local native plants, which we acquired at the Citrus Garden Club sale. We never use pesticides on our lawn and around our home. Instead, we have installed several bad houses and bird feeders to promote, to promote natural removal of bugs. Our flower and herb gardens attract many birds and butterflies as well. We apply only environmentally and pet-friendly salts to our walkways and driveway during inclement weather. We have installed rain barrel water systems both in the front and back of our home and use this water to care for our gardens. We have left large areas of our side and backyards wild, recognizing the adjacent woods and maintaining a safe habitat for many animals living near us. We spend significant time in our yard with family and friends each season. We bring the same awareness of our environment and abutting woods to our decision to install an in-ground pool for our family at our home. After researching many local companies and types of pools, we selected Cherry Hill Pools of Pembroke to complete this installation for us. Cherry Hill Pools has completed many wonderful pool projects in Citroën, including one on our street, and its team is experienced with our local regulations. In our plans, we have invested in the salt water system rather than traditional chlorine, and we hope that we will have a solar heat. We have considered our current use of our property along with the alterations by its prior owners, and we have developed the best possible location for our pool. Thank you again for your consideration about the proposed pool. To address this, the line here is delineated in blue and is delineated by Brad uh, Holmes, environmental research, uh, restoration consulting. And this entire area in the backyard here is currently lawn. Uh, it's like 
gravel area here adjacent to the garage and a patio here. This has been disturbed um, or has been maintained as one for quite some time. I looked at prior aerials, um, <coughs> including the 2001 other photos, and it, it has been a lawn area since then. They're proposing the pool within this area here as close to the house as, as practical. Uh, it's a rather small pool. It's 12 by 25, basically, in its other dimensions with a small patio area and some plantings in this green crescent area. Um, it would occupy space that's now landscaped with two, um, I think the Japanese maple trees, uh, some kind of ornamental tree, and a uh, planting bed and lawn. There's a railroad tie retaining wall that comes along here. A portion of that would be removed and that would be lawn area as well. Um, we, we spoke to Paul Shea uh, with regards to this, and he thought that mitigation would be in order. So the entire area within the 50-foot no disturb zone here uh, comprises about 326 square feet of disturbance or, or area within that zone. Of that, about uh, 270 square feet is going to be the pool or the impervious. Um, we would replicate over in this area with planting specified here, including Irish blueberry, pinkberry, and swamp of the other things. As I read in the letter, it's going to be a, a salt water system for the pool instead of chlorine. So that's um, any concerns about spilling that water into the weapons would be mitigated. Um, there's a, some impervious area here that would be replaced by the, the pool patio. But basically we we'll try to keep it as close to the house as possible. Um, I don't know if I can answer any questions from the commission. Well, why don't we work our way through and see what we have. Okay. Um, usually we'd ask for two to one break where you are in the district of property. But you can't, they wouldn't in, in, in getting it completely out of the 50 foot. It's difficult to get it completely out of the 50 foot. Put it closer to the garage. Oh, at at an angle. Yeah. It would be, I think, a very tight squeeze even if that. I'm trying to squeeze it. And it would be more than a one. Uh, we are providing more than we're, we're um, using up in this area. You said two something. What would you say? The impervious is about 200, I think it's 271 square feet. The, the actual area that includes this planting area within the 50 foot buffer would be about 327 square feet. We're providing 360 square feet. But if you're it's 270, isn't it 50? Mm -hmm. It's 200. So it would have to be more flexible. All right. 40, 600. All right. Okay. I guess we were trying to minimize the disturbance with the mitigation. This is all currently lawn. It's maintained as lawn. It has been for a long time. So this is an area that I don't know if it was a deep Gregorio's or not, but it's currently, it has gravel and it has like um, keystone in it. It has plants growing up through it. It's, imper it's pervious rather. Um, so we thought that was a, a good location without causing further disturbance to provide mitigation. Well, it's up to you to decide what your mitigation will be, but we mm -hmm. do like two to one. Okay. Period. All right. Richard? No, I'm good. Um, it seems as though the family's quite conscious and aware and um, generally enhancing in the buffer zone mm -hmm. is something that I'm like it's already there it's already the buffer zone right. it's doing what it does um, in Penny's case the two to one we do ask for that okay. um, this is a little bit they seem dedicated to the town 
currently the historical society is in the process of doing some major historical mitigation to the grist mill area mm -hmm. and it could be possible to have a donation to them of some trees so maybe instead of doubling what they're doing in the buffer zone there they'd be willing to make a donation of you know you have 12 bushes here say 12 uh, white oak trees or you know saplings that could be planted as part of the historical renovation and that's saplings as opposed to like a yeah not a, not tree big trees yeah like not not those. big not giant trees Which something okay. and, and there's there's going to be a large project that goes on at the grist mill right Time. by the rotary it's it, it's something to mention to them that if they it would please them to, to site to mitigation yeah, it is and it would be a, I think beneficial be to the town to yeah. I think I can't speak for them I won't try to tonight I'll have to run it by them but I'm quite sure they'll be amenable to that and I you know I don't speak for the whole board either sure. but that's just something that occurred to me when I looked at this that you know they do need the trees they okay. do they need they need help with that I'll certainly run that by them I think they'll agree with that well um, and I understand it's all lawn already and it is going to be a saltwater pool, but I'm, I'm curious, did, did they look at all about if you rotated this pool like 90 degrees, you could almost have, have That's the whole thing out of the buffer it's, zone? It, it's too close to the garage then. Right. And they have existing landscaping that's already there that they'd yeah. have to take I, right. I mean, out. Yeah. <coughs> Well, let, let the engineer answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's, um, it's a possibility. I see exactly what you mean. Um, I think that obviously there's still going to be some disturbance when you rotate it in that direction based on this footprint. Um, I would have to actually rotate that on the drawing to, to know what the numbers would be, obviously, but um, it's something we could consider. I, I think this is what they envision, they, they're basically taking up a landscape area, an uh, area that's already been disturbed. Right. By it, there's two trees there, as I stated earlier. They would hope to uh, relocate them elsewhere on the property, just replant them. And then, um, so I, I think we were hoping that we're basically disturbing an area that's- Right, it's already lawn all the way down to the west. Right. right. Point. Uh, that's something I would have to. I was just curious. I don't know if they have their heart set on this particular orientation or if it's something that we could um, consider. Uh, if there's any practical reasons that they have it moved in this way. That's what, that was their wish. Um, but we could consider that as well. Tony? Uh, edify me. Uh, why is salt water? better for a freshwater environment than chemicals? I think the amount you release in the, perhaps backwashing the pool, um, I think generally it's considered that chlorine or is going to pull some... The some same kind of thing that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't understand why salt water is really good for that for a freshwater environment. Quite frankly, I don't think either is, in, in the amounts that they get released in, I don't think either a chlorine or a salt water pool is going to be a practical problem unless it's somehow concentrated all in one location. If it, if it got run down through a pipe to one tree, the salt water could perhaps cause some problems with that one tree. But I think if it's a case where you release it onto the lawn, some of it soaks in, some of it gets dispersed by the next rainfall or whatever, it's so diluted, um, I, I think either one would really not present a, pra a problem in terms of... Um, yeah, unless you had a large uh, release. I'm sorry? Unless you had a large release. Which is... Not likely. I mean, it's about a, as likely as having a John break on a. But salt, a, salt. I guess I, I'd rather eat salt than chlorine. <laughs> you can handle a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. it's a natural <laughs> element. Yeah. Okay. The other question you don't want that I have. Either. Uh, it it looks as though you're trying. You're you want to do the mitigation 
in that gravel area? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's gravel. It does have plants growing up through them, the surfaces right. and grasses, and but we would. Am I reading this wrong, or is that area not in the well, in the uh, in the in the wetlands? It is, but it's been obviously disturbed um, over time. I don't. I'm not sure if the De Gregorios did that, or if it was a prior owner. It's along the stone wall, and not knowing that it was wetland, I obviously whoever was there just decided that a little gravel would look nice along that portion. So we're proposing to enhance that with some substantial shrub plantings and. Yeah, but you're doing that in the wetland side rather than in the uh, on the other. On the but I, but it's an area that's disturbed, and so essentially you're going to make it more like a wetland. If, if they do nothing, then it will remain disturbed. Yeah. If we if we do this project, we have an opportunity. I guess I have a hard time with the pool in the first place. So I'm uh, I'm I'm looking for uh, for things. I think that should I, I think your uh, mitigation should be on the uh, not on the wetland side, but on the other side of that but, line. But Tony, if this is a disturbed area that needs to be reclamated into well, wetlands. So, well, I mean, why would we not want them to do that? Um, because of any, I mean, are we? I mean, they could do more. We could, we could have them go into this and take out all the, all the invasive species as well. Well, we could ask for that or offsite. You know, we can t talk about right. that one. But right. I think there's an area here, it seems to me, that's disturbed that should be wetlands. It didn't, and it didn't look all that bad to me when okay. I was there. That, all right. I mean, I guess that's... Um, um, and and how um, how is this pool? Uh, how how do we contain the water in the pool in the event of a crack or of of of, of the pool somehow releasing more water than than you'd like to think is possible. It's a, um, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to go by there yet, but on Route 53 in Pembroke, the, it's the fiberglass or, I don't know if it's fiberglass reinforced plastic or what, but they're pre-made, they're pre-formed pools. Uh -huh. I had one drive by me on the road one day and I didn't know what it was, but that's what it is. It's, it's a pre-made fiberglass unit. Could it crack? I suppose, but it's not like concrete where if something settles, I mean, almost any concrete wall will crack over time. Um, but this is fiberglass. If it cracks, you're going to know right away that there's a problem, first of all. Um, and secondly, I think it would be unlikely that it's going to crack because it's, it's going to be that they do the installation. They're going to properly bed around it so that it doesn't have pockets which could allow the, the walls, for instance, to bulge out and crack. Uh, they'll make sure that those don't move. And where it's one piece fiberglass, it's, it's probably a better idea than, say, a gunite pool or a, or a, a cast in place concrete pool um, or even a vinyl liner, which anything can cause a tear on that. So. Of, the, of the choices, it's probably one of the safer ones. Jim? Well, first you, you you look at for an alternative to see if you can turn the pool to well, minimize the to, yeah. to minimize the improvement into the 50 foot buffer. Based on that, I think then we then we can determine the square footage of mitigation, whether it be on site or off site. I have uh, two I have two comments. One one is between uh, wetland flag A3 and A6. That should that should be a mitigation area. There's uh, lawn lawn clippings have been dumped there. Um, so I would suggest that the lawn clippings be removed from there and that okay. be part of that, and that area be part of um, buffer zone mitigation plantings. And also, if you're looking for more mitigation plantings, I think the area would be, uh, you know, probably between um, flag 7 and 11, or maybe 11 and 8, where you could actually get some, some nice buffer zone plantings to the wetland itself, which would enhance, <coughs> the, hab which would enhance the habitat. So there's, there's two existing areas, I think, on the site. One needs to be mitigated because there's lawn clippings dumped and anything, anything that was living there is not there anymore. 
And if you want mitigation, I think I think it could be done uh, on site, and then depending on the square footage that's in the 50-foot buffer, then we'd have to further discuss whether or not that was adequate, or whether or not off-site mitigation, as Todd suggested, um, at the grist mill. I think it's a discussion that needs to be, take place after you determine how many what the square footage would be in the 50-foot buffer. This is after turning the pool. Yeah. If, if, uh, if turning the if, if that happens, if turning the pool turning the pool is feasible or, or acceptable to the owners, it just looks like it would get it about as far out of the buffer zone as possible. And um, sometimes we look for that with septic systems and other things. If people have an alternative, obviously putting the swim pool in the front yard isn't a great alternative. But um, if it could be turned. And that would get it. Now, they may have a reason for not wanting to do that. And, and um, you, you wind up being less than 50 feet away. So if there is a discharge or something from the pool, and I don't think we can control that. I mean, there's so many pools in situ. Um, but obviously, keeping anything further away from the wetlands is for the benefit of. Sure. sure. And then. As Jim points out, that small area that juts in that has some yard waste and stuff, that wetlands line might try be a little different. And some buffer plantings could be planted along that back back edge. You could okay. do some fencing too. Yeah, it, but they're not. They don't have anything that looks like they're pushing further out. But sometimes we'd have poles or something put up with a little sign that says, right. you know, this is a wetlands area. Don't no disturbance. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to continue this? Um, do you have an opportunity to, to talk to your client? And yeah. I, if we're going to um, spin the pool, I would like to make sure that that's a possibility with them. Or but you'll have to rather. send us back something, anyways. You know, you, you have to modify the plan. Or sure. Yeah. Can we get that? Do you think we can get it in for the next hearing? Do you think that? That would be a problem. I don't know. Um, We'll okay. just continue it to the next one. Okay. If there's a yeah. problem. And then if they can't, they can't. Did we ask, was there anybody in the audience that wanted to comment on this? Okay, I make a motion to continue under green zone green, but August 27th at 7 o'clock. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Great. Thank, thank you. you. We, do, we do appreciate the mitigation plantings that you're proposed, though. Don't let that. We do appreciate that. Don't let that fall. We have an amendment to the orders for Scott at 274 Gannett Road. On August 13th, um, 2012, 715 Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 Town Central Code of Bylaws to amend the order conditions issued under DEP file number 68. 2410 regarding the application of Robert Nan Scott for deck extension and grading on property located at 274 Gannett Road, situated by others and other interested parties are invited to attend. How are we doing? Hey, Mr. Scott. Path, path engineering. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Scott are here also. Uh, what we're looking for, we had a, uh, an order of conditions for this uh, property, which included the construction of a pipe bank. A wall going alongside it. Uh, the pipe tank was placed in uh, the Scots. We wanted to make it a little more safer because the wall was between one foot and three foot on the sides, and they, wanted, they had grandchildren and they didn't want to uh, make it any uh, worse for those kids to fall off anymore. They put in a, a deck over the, over the tank, as you can see, and that was not included as part of the original water. In addition, uh, fill was put in along to uh, fill on along the side of the wall, um, alongside of the tank to, to flatten that area up. Again, that was not included as part of the uh, as, as part of the order. Um, what we'd like to do is keep that fill in there, lumen seed it, and grade it back off at a three-one slope to help to uh, allow that area to, to be filled in there. It was a low a low area. In addition, the town of UPW wants their drain line extended uh, or, or replaced. 
there's an existing, they say there's an existing line that, uh, that gets discharged into the uh, wetlands and they want to replace that line. Um, and that was there, and I talked to, to Jim about that, and Jim read uh, uh, a memo from the DPW saying that they want to put a manhole in here and extend that line uh, to where it was originally. Make a long story short, that's what we Okay. I was under the impression that something got crushed in the It wasn't necessarily crushed. It was an, it was an old it was an it, it was an old pipe. We don't know the condition of it now, but there was it was an old okay. pipe that that may be still there. I don't but it was it's it's, it's either below the Right now, if you look in this, uh, there's a head wall that comes out, and the invert, the invert of the pipe uh, is buried two feet from where the ground is right now. It's been filled up with sediment this time it built up. And uh, that, there was a, a, another line that was to the that came down and did that at the end of that uh, end of that uh, what? That's the DPW wants to do that. And that's, but you're not proposing that today. Well, it is being proposed by the DPW to, to put that line in there. But that's not what you're asking for. Well, technically, the DPW wants to come back and, and, and come before the board and do it. I'm just part of. Go ahead. You put fill in that we did not authorize. This, yes. That's what you're asking. That's, yeah, that's what we're asking for. Why can't yeah. you take the fill back out? You supposedly could put it in to get the tank. Mm -hmm. No, it was, it was put in the back fill zone around the pipe. There were plates that. Uh, I, think, I know it, it yeah. was written. I wrote it correctly. Right. I'm sorry. You're right. It was the way I wrote it. I, I misunderstood it. The, the plates we used to put in the tank. And then the take, the take it out, and then when when he decided he didn't really want to have a a, a a wall along the other side because of safety reasons of the kids, and he wanted to put a a deck along that. Right. Phil was brought in at that point in time to fill along that side. And that's how it was. It was not used to to install the tanks because there was plates there. We were sitting on there for the for the. Uh, um, crane to sit on. Okay. To place the, place the Jim, you've been there? Yes. Can we jump to Jim for a second on yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the fill, the fill on oh, the deck was not authorized. That's why they're coming in for the amendment. Um, I, have a, I have a a memo, a, a small memo here from the DPW, and I'll read it for you because it's very. They sent a letter? Uh, <laughs> no, just a memo. Just, <laughs> it's just a memo. Well, they don't want to set memo. a precedent. It's something, something, it's, it is something we need to get resolved because I don't, I don't know whether the DPW is proposing to do it or whether they want the homeowner to do it because, because of the fill that was placed in. But we need to resolve that. But from the DPW, what it said was, uh, I spoke to the engineer Phil Spath about the drainage at this location. It appears there was an old pipe that used to drain out on the other side of the holding tank. We need, we need to put in a small manhole and a piece of pipe with a head wall. So, so, they, so, they, so there does need to, to be some drainage improvements. Whether or not the DPW is suggesting that the fill was the problem or whether or not they're going to do it themselves, I think we need to resolve that. Because it's, it's kind of unclear whether DPW is going to go in and do it or whether they're So did the fill bury the pipe? Is that why there needs to be no. a head wall? Oh, okay. No, there was no, right? Under existing condition plan. Well, it did. Right. No, it wasn't. It, the fill didn't bury the pipe. Because right here, there was no other pipe either. either, either both one hit. This is the original design. And as you can see, there's the outfall and the invert, you know, the bottom of the pipe for that, it's roughly at elevation five. Because this had been all for sediment, and, and there was no line that we found. We didn't find it because that was all with time it all got filled in uh, back into here. What they want to do is they want to put a manhole in here and, and put that line back in. 
but this, this look in here, this looks, and of course there's no scale, this looks like a lot of linear feet, and this doesn't look that far from the tank. I don't know what the scale no, is. No, this, right, this. So, so, when you look, the, the line, So if you put them side by side, you see if you can scroll it to the front. And I'm trying to find the, the outfall, which is right into here. <coughs> see this little square? Mm -hmm. And that outfall came in right here and, and just bubbled up and went down. And that's okay, so the tank's probably about here, the right? Tanks, the tanks are right against this, okay. this, this side. There's one side of the tank here, and it came out five feet. And it sits right into here. And then, if I got it right, the fill's running this way. Yes, exactly. The fill's running. If you look at this, his this face is r roughly not the face of, of this deck, but the deck now comes out roughly ten feet from here and goes out that way. Mm -hmm. Side. How many yards of fill? I. Did you did the Scots buy the fill? I mean, did they purchase it? Did you have truck load? Do the you don't know how many yards roughly of fill that came in there. He spent it right in the His his little dump truck. Yeah. So roughly. Yeah, so thirty yards. Yeah. Six or eight yards. Yeah. Per truck, it's probably five yards. Five per truck. Per truck. It, it, it's six trucks. Thirty yards. 30 yards. 30 yards. What they want to do is just braid that off, loom it, and seal it. Well, before they do, uh, yeah. you know, before, I think before you do anything, but I think that the fill needs to be stabilized. We, well, we, it is stabilized right now. You're not getting any, any uh, erosion from that fill. There's no erosion from that fill. It's, not, it's not stabilized. It's, if, if, you, if, if you look at the front by the embankment, there's no vegetation on it. And, right, it's, and there's already fill going, there's already fill oh, going exactly. into the, into the, into, the, into the marsh area. No, no, so it's I was there today. Key. There is. <laughs> I'm sure. What this said, this small 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 what's with yeah. the, this gravel edge is what Jim's talking about. Yeah, the, 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 the slope. The slope. See, here's, here's the edge. That's right here. See right into here? That's the edge. The wetland is right back into here. That, there is no fill. You see that? But right up by the corner of the house. There's a spot where it's been going down into the wetland. And that spot right. has been right. the drainage, where that drainage pipe yeah. Yeah. That, that was yeah. there oh. by the swale back down in there and brought it down. Not due to really the take the swale the construction. Right. Well, not yet until we figure out what you can do. Right. right. Once right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is this Listen to this for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Just for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fill, the, this slope, without question, needs to be stabilized with vegetation as well as the top. But you can't do that until we figure out what DPW wants yeah. to do. Don't we need right, a? Uh, don't some we need salt sock or something on the bottom, or? It's right here, right here. Right now, there's a there's a couple of there's a coat of wood here. There's a, there's, a, there's the fill, the slope, and then a coat of wood. The wood should be removed, and the slope stabilized. But not until DPW figures out what they want to do with the. Well, the I mean, what we can do right. is. Well, it should be, there should be something at the toe of that to hold it in place because it could take DP, D, the DPW how many, how long? Well, yeah. what I recommend is just we'll go forward with the, with the um, grading of that area and allow us to, to keep the deck and then DPW can come back in to say, okay, this is what we want to do. If they have to dig a trench to put in that line, they'll dig a trench to put in the line. So they dig it up and, uh, yeah. and then you have to fix it again. But, that's but the fill's not stabilized. But what I'm saying, we can, it, it, if, if you close the hearing and give us the amended order, we can stable, we can bring that, bring that slope back, stabilize it, move and see it, stabilize it. And then at that point in time, the DPW can come back in and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Okay. I think we that it, Sorry, go ahead. No, well, actually, we just, should be working. Yeah, we should. Well, you, Henry, are you done? You'll be prepared I'm, to I'm redo it. Go ahead. 
you, you'd be prepared to redo it? In other words, if you stabilize it and then the DPW digs it up, you're going to redo it again? No, the DPW would because technically they'd be, they're, they're the one who wants that line in there. They're saying that the line was in there before. We could never find it. Okay, so the DP, it would be up to DPW to dig that up because it's the DPW who wants it. We can, what we can do is grade this back. The original slope it was down in there to allow that, that swale that was there before to still live there. But what I'm saying is the pipe leaving that head wall would be bubbling up. Some would bubble up and go overland down to the wetlands, and some would leach down through underneath there and go to the wetlands. And we could just bring it back to that grade in that area. You know, and at that point in time, let the DPW figure out what's, what they want to do with that. Uh, this thing is the DPW problem. I think stabilizing it is important. Yeah, I right. do. But I also know that inside the 50 foot buffer, Penny mentioned it in the last hearing that it's a two to one mitigation for a disturbance in that 50 foot buffer. So there has to be some sort of enhancement. It can't just be rye grass and loam that gets put there because it's. So some sort of salt tolerant native species on the top of that bank to make up for the fact that they filled it with dirt. Or we'll take that dirt out. Or take the dirt out. That's their prerogative. Which but you it's can't do. Oh, okay. Now you, you can't put a a species, a wetland species, on that on that spot because it's too because high it's out of the wetland. Exactly. All right. And so then it has to be something that would. Well, would something grow to there. Something, something you want to stabilize. Right, you obviously you're going to stabilize the blank. You're going to grade it out, you're going to put loam on top, and you're going to plant grass seeds. But exactly. I think that it was, that it was if, if you came to us in a normal hearing and it wasn't an amendment, it was part of your NOI, we would say, okay, if you're going to fill in the 50-foot buffer, there has to be some sort of mitigation. I, I know we would have said that. So for us to not say it now is an injustice to the town and to the bylaws of the resource. Marsh elder will. I'm going to crowd it right into there on the edge of that bank. I'm going to soften that grade up. Soften that grade right up so there isn't a sharp grade. Pull it back. Let the marsh elder, I'm going to transplant that. You can take marsh elder, pieces of it. It's a continuous root. Plant. I take it you're Mr. Scott. Yeah, Mr. Scott, Captain Scott. I'm going to take and take these. Look, Mr. Scott, when someone starts to speak at a hearing, what they're supposed to do is just identify themselves for the for the I'm person. Robert Scott, I live at 274 Vienna Road. Thank you. Thank you. It's Marsh Elder. Thank you, Bob. So, we can put so in there you go. The Marsh Elder. But we can, we can do it instead of waiting with time, we can close the hearing, and at that point in time, we'll, we'll pull that grade back as we said we're going to do, stabilize that slope, and at next time, we'll let the DPW figure out what they want to do. Well, what's the what's the, what's the angle of the slope you'd pull it? How much? How much? One slope minimum. From, the, from where the toe of the fill is now. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I, I mean, I don't have any more questions. It was just what we discussed: how far that pipe was away from the deck, and. Do, is there a wetland? I mean, with this an edge of bank here, is there a wetlands line? Yeah. See, here's the here's the wetlands line coming in right around. See that. Part of it. And do you can you draw on this line where that fill is? Right here. It's following. It's following this line right into here. It goes all the way up. So just take a look at this. And the wetlands line gets further. This is the wetlands line. This yeah. is the wetlands line. Yeah. And then they've just filled this. Yeah, it's in the picture. You can see it. Yeah. So this was filled in all out to the, pretty much out to the deck. 
Correct. And the only thing that we approved. It's in the picture he gave. Yeah. Yeah. From the neighbor's yard. Yeah. Right. That was right. Or I'm saying, you see, we don't, we're, we're going to maintain this open. The sweatland lines go further on, it goes further away from the slope yeah. back down into here. The line, the it's closest line is back to the, on this side of the. The wetland line now, now, I believe, is right in front of the. the right. Of the yes. So we just yeah. added, they just the added 30 yards of fill. All of, the, all, of, all of this is all new fill. Right. 30 yards of fill just went in within two or three feet of the wetland. Correct. It was for the truck to bring in the fill so we could backfill around the tank. Yeah, so all, all, this, all of this new fill. Right. And it was put there for the construction? Of the, of the, the backfill of the, of the uh, tight tank. I thought when we... Not for I, the construction. You yeah. have plates down it's for exactly the for equipment. The, right, but that's what I'm saying. Right. It's for the, this was for just the to hide fill. the wall that contains the tight tanks. Not hide the wall, up to bring it up against the tight tank and eliminate that wall. Okay. That's no idea. There's a wall that comes in, which you can see on this here. There's a wall that comes in right along the space. That's the wall that they put in. We've eliminated the wall coming in here because they didn't want a large drop off for the grandkids. So they, they want to bring this and flatten this out. There was a drop off before. Okay, there was a drop off before. Before you even think there was going to be a slide. I'm just going to drop the tank. You know, right. to do with no disturbance. From the road almost. It right. was a pretty. Right. 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 Pulling this, in the slope, pulling this back to three to one slope minimum, even further back into here, so you'll have a, a flatter slope along this side, all the way down. You're pulling it back. Pretty clear about what you're supposed to do in the eight zone. Uh, right now, it's roughly. Just I think right now you may be at a, a two to one slope along that side. Yeah. And what they'll end up doing is creating a three or four to one slope by by cutting the top off and, right, and pulling that slope flatter as it goes back in this area. And then a little bit seed and stabilize the slope. To his neighbors. Well, I could come I have, I have you could just yeah. cut the top off. What was, what was this? All this, this area is all grass. All, 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 grass. all this area. Yeah. Yeah. If there was a wetland from here on up, it was grass. Yeah, it's all grass. I see the grass into here. That one all the way up. Yeah. Right, I mean, I, unless I'm missing something, I mean, we just had a hearing before this about a swimming pool that's almost out of the 50 foot, and we're trying to decide whether it should even be in it. And there's 30 <laughs> yards of material that just got dumped within two feet of the wetlands. All in, all in the buffer zone. Yeah. On a hearing that we had to just replace the tank. Now that the construction's all done, I, I don't know. If you can, can you can you pull it all out and revegetate it and put in some buffer zone plantings? The mock elder is because it's one of many plants that would work. Here. I think you talk about. I think you're talking about transplanting. Which is fine. I don't care where it comes well, from. It, well, it would well, come well, from. Yeah, the, it would come, come from, from the, the, the creek. Yeah, all over in the backyard. The neighbor's backyard, actually. There's, I think. Yeah, there's other salt colony yeah. plants. They, they, you know, very well. And the whole, whole idea was to stabilize it. To, to keeping a dip in there to really the flatness. I mean, they mm -hmm. they did it. More parking. Yeah. It, it was, you know, it was done. But what they'd like to do is just to flatten that out and green it up the, the same way it was before. It'll be higher. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it needs to be. Restoration, like right. Should we do a pre-construction? 
Was Spencer or anybody that was working there? I believe so. I believe he, I think he called and said they were going to stop exactly. work. We should. Yeah. 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 Send yeah. photographs yeah. on, on projects like this. Yeah. Send photographs yeah. with the yeah. sign yeah. and yours. Yeah. 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 No, originally the pitch on this project was it was going to be very sterile. It's going to be just a little hole, a tight tank, no, no disruption. Right. Yeah. Well, safe is fine, but this is filling in a hole. Well, it's it's a buffer zone, right? It's fifty foot buffer. Then he can cut this, bring this back to say to this line to down there. It's from here right there, cut a line right down through. You know, take this take this knoll up, what I'm trying to say. And just make it a grade going from it seems to me you made a just a man like burn. Yeah. Oh, is that maybe you get the trucks to, to dump the, the fill on there. Just take all that out. Yeah, we'll take it. And then, and then we'll do this one. With, with appropriate salt tolerant buffers on plants. About 27 cubic yards. 30. All right. Do we get to everybody, Kevin? <laughs> I know, I didn't, yeah. I've got, I've got pictures going this way, but they're not going like, But as you said, it yeah, was all, all good. Yeah. 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 And the restoration. Right. right. All right. Do you want to run with that? Yeah. So we get through everybody and get through. Are we all set, Jim? Anybody in the audience? Are you ready to close this, Frank? Well, I, was, I, think I was just going to say, I wanted Jim's opinion. I mean, what do you think? First thing, get a silt, silt sock up to stop any any of the migration and then get get the fill out of there and talk about a replanting plan? Yeah, as, as, much, as much fill as you can. That's, that's practical. And then a restoration plan with salt tolerant plants. So I think we need a restoration. I yeah. think we need a restoration plan. Remove as much fill as possible with a, with a planting restoration plan. What I mean, what he'd like to do is keep the fill up against the this grade this back back down from the what the tank is, grade it back down to the existing gravel. You know, How far out does that have to go, Phil? I'd say uh okay. yeah, shut it off, it won't run. Six or eight right, because that's right in front of that. They're the ones that are going to have to do it. Yeah, but I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want you to, like, well, if, if you're going to plant in this, if you're going to, if you're going to restore this site, which I think you know, should be a recommendation, to restore this site, remove as much fill as possible, plant salt off. And then, you know, DPW is going to come back in here. But if their time frame is in a couple of years, then they can get back. Maybe they can make it Because what we could do is just bring this down to this grade that was there before. Right. We, just, we know the grade here. We know the grade here. Yeah. We'll just bring that down to what, what, what that was before and let DPW right. handle that. Because it, it's, it's DPW's yeah. problem, I hate to say. That's, right. He did agree to that. Okay. So basically, you, just, basically you, you suggest just restore that to the pre- Pre, yeah, pre and then dish. and then from here, and then take it to, you know, knock this down. You know, I mean, as, as much yeah, as possible. This grade to this grade, we want to the floor. You know, from from the tour of the slope where it is now, to where this, because there's a knoll here. But I, I, I don't know. But I'm thinking you know, some of that stuff should be removed. Well, right. Well, we could. Some will be. Because yeah, I know you're saying you're, you're saying greater from the from the total. It should all be removed. Now. You yeah. cut that yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Just so you have a yeah. slope instead of a. <laughs> but you're, you're you're saying that the that the uh, soil is going to be at the at, at the top of the uh, of the tank, right? And then you're going to grade down from there. That's. Oh, I mean, no, if you start if you start a foot lower, your your grade. I mean, you can take out another three or four cubic feet. I mean, it's. I I understand that you don't want 
grandchildren jumping off that. Right, that's an, off I'm saying that's along, along this side. Deck with a rail. We'll bring this back down and then from, right. and, and bring this grade back to where it was before. And from here on up, you just, you got a, a, a grade maybe nine here and a grade six and just have a, 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 a slope from that nine to six straight right. on up. You don't mound it type of thing, which technically yeah. is out there now. Why? Grade it straight down through. Why? Yeah. Make it easy. Make it make it look better for one thing. Uh, have a straight ground uh, sloping to the. I mean, but now we're just talking about tweak and fill in the wetlands. No, go up to the wetlands. The well, there. right up, right. The fill shouldn't even be there. It should be restored. I think it's just going to sit on the ground where it's going to. Originally. No. I no, no, the if they came in and said, "Can we fill this?" What would you say? No. no I don't yeah, that's right. You'd say no. And if you're going to excavate this area here, well, and you're going to leave another to the grade that it was before. It was before. And Where's those old pictures? Where's those yeah. other ones? Uh, sorry, so so where are they? Oh, where did the they vanish? Pictures. Yeah. Right. The two. If you want the pictures. I have, other, I have others that, that, that you can look at from this angle here. Uh, so this plus all of this is all been filled in. The tight tank is a tight tank. From here, 10 feet over is where the tight tank sits. This is the old deck, which you can see right. Uh, see this right here? Mm -hmm. That was the old deck. And the tight tank was in it here, and they put the... the and they, the, they built in a deck over the top the, of the, the tight tank. the deck is on, on top of the tight tank, right. right. And there are hatches to get into that. But then, this got filled in. Yes. This got, this got filled in. And, and then, and then and this, all this of this got, is all filled. Yes. If you get a deck over the tight tank, why, why can't you just take all that material out and, and have stairs, you don't wanna, you don't stairs wanna, going down. You don't want a straight face along the tight tank. You gotta fill up against that tight tank. So there's, but, but what you're talking about is a few yards of material right. sloped yeah. against the tight tank. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. 30. Okay. Well, it's not gonna be really steep because if you, I don't know if you saw it before, if you look, yeah. 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 see into here, mm -hmm. this is the slope it's going to be, right? The same, yes. same slope into here. It's going to go from elevation 7.1 to roughly elevation 6. So you're talking about a foot drop between here and here. Because this is the grade. Oh, I mean, I mean, I mean, this way. From here down. All right, from here down, all right. Okay. right. From here down would be a lot, roughly a 3 one slope. Going out there, 3 one slope. Okay, so that'll have to be stabilized in some way. Yeah, maybe, well, that's, you know, that's maybe, a, maybe a fiber roll or something at the base and plant it. Otherwise, but then this is all got to be revegetated. This is all got to get revegetated. And, and as much as possible removed before we Right. Get yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now, now do I have this right? Is this this thing being filled? Is what that what we're talking about is the DPW See? problem? That, that, with time, this has built up sediment from this line has built this up. All right, roughly two feet. Mm -hmm. And when water come down there, it would bubble along the side and, and go along the, the slope and also leach on the ground and get out. Right. But, uh, but the sediment, we, so we, what we'd end up doing is just bringing it back to that grade and, and then cutting this down to where what prior was before, so it'll, it'll do what it was doing before. And let the DPW figure out, okay, if they want to put a manhole, they can put in a manhole and bring that line, but they'll have to come to you for you guys to tell you what they want to do. Uh, and it's not up to, to my client to. Right. Yeah, okay. That's, in, that's actually in. There's some soft marsh plants that are right, right where they're looking. Right, no, and if you look at the wetlands line, it's right at the corner of the deck here. Yeah, it's right into here. The wetlands go kind of in front of it, and then they start going out where the, the, mm -hmm. the, the wood pile is roughly right into here. All right. There is some alternate floor around the wood. Right up, right well, rather of, than, right you know what, right rather than an amendment to this order, we're going to give you an, a, a cease and desist and an enforcement order and tell you to take this out of here. But it's a cease and desist, I'll take it out. 
Phil, this, this well, I'm just saying. I mean, it, it, it give us an amended order to to. Um, Your amended order is asking to put this in here. Amended order, right? And and the the um, deck. We want to still keep the deck. So amended order would be to keep the deck and eliminate the fill. All right. All right. We could do that. We can close that. We'll write our orders. Yeah. I make a motion to close um, the amendment for Scott 274 Gannett Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I just want to make sure that that you that you clear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you want. We're not going to do that tonight, are we, no. Frank? Because they're no. they on here for order. No. No. How are we doing? How are you? It's going to take a while to get that right. Um, Sion, 136 Indian Trail, septic and reconfiguration of driveway. On August 13th, 2012, at 7.25 p.m., the Town Hall City Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, to amend the order conditions issued under DEP file number 68. 2282 regarding the application of Lewis and Jane Sion to revise the septic driveway and stormwater permit on property located at 136 Indian Trail, situate about us and other interested parties invited to attend. Thank you. Uh, Rick Brady, Mr. Consulting. Uh, this is Paul Petroselli, the applicant. Uh, Paul has this property. Uh, this is a lot that the commission permitted over a year, year and a half ago for the Seons uh, at 136 Indian Trail. Uh, there is a wetland area across the street uh, from this lot. Uh, the one the buffer zone just touches on the front left corner and in the road, really, the front right corner in this area here. Uh, when we were before the commission uh, previously uh, for the order of conditions that uh, was already issued, uh, the work within the buffer zone was a portion of the driveway right here. And the uh, Mr. Kelly is working with uh, his architect, uh, and they came up with a house configuration that they feel blends in uh, with the ledge that exists on the site. Uh, it's a little bit lower than the generic colonial house that we had proposed previously on the top of this uh, ledge knoll. Uh, although all of that work is outside of the buffer zone. Uh, we're also requesting an amendment to the stormwater uh, permit. Uh, we do have a slightly larger roof size than was previously proposed and slightly more uh, driveway than was previously proposed. Uh, in addition, they'd like to do a loop driveway uh, in front of the house and a very small corner of that driveway uh, just touches on the buffer zone. So as far as the order of conditions go, Really, the only change is the addition of this loop driveway uh, connecting in and just touching on the buffer zone in this area here. The driveway is in the exact same location, exact same dimensions that were previously approved. Uh, there have been no changes to the septic leaching area. Uh, we did have to reconfigure the septic tank location uh, to accommodate the new house layout. Um, as far as the stormwater permit goes, we did new calculations uh, for the pre and the post development uh, of this property. Uh, in, in order to attenuate the stormwater runoff, we're proposing uh, a series of um, mitigating measures here. Uh, what we're proposing is we have a crushed on reservoir below the garage that's going to collect a lot of the uh, nutrients from the house. Uh, anywhere where pavement is proposed, or pervious pavers uh, in the front of the driveway at the entry to the front door of the house, uh, or even the patio and walkways. 
Uh, all of those will be underlain by a bed of crushed stone, uh, which is similar to what was originally approved uh, for the previous house uh, last year. We're going to follow the same uh, advice that the Commission has given us at the conclusion of that hearing. Uh, the Commission had asked us at that point to install rain gardens in addition to the crushed stone reservoirs. Um, so we are going to maintain that same rain garden to the front of the property that was previously proposed. The second rain garden that we had at that time was located in this area here where they wanted to um, do the garage now. So we've actually relocated that to the rear of the property, to the rear of the garage, uh, and we had to increase the size of that to account for uh, some of the additional roof runoff. Uh, calculations were submitted for the two, the 10, and the 100 year storm events. Uh, those calculations show that there will be a reduction in both the rate and the volume of runoff uh, heading toward any of the property lines. The way the property is graded, both existing and proposed, uh, the top of the knoll kind of splits the lot where some of the runoff comes towards Indian Trail, uh, some of the runoff heads towards the rear property line. Uh, so those calculations were separated to show that there will be a decrease uh, heading both to the front of the property and to the rear of the property for both three. Uh, there have been no changes to erosion control. Erosion control is still proposed to uh, attenuate any sediment during construction. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Penny? No, I think my only question was that when you're going to enlarge the rain gardens and you said you want. Yes. No. Good. Try. I, I don't have any questions. Paul? No questions. Tony? No. No questions. No. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, can you just uh, continue my own role? Uh, my house is right below uh, or right behind uh, the property they proposed to build. Mm -hmm. uh, the elevation from the house to my property is over 20 some feet. So, I, I didn't understand the go over the buffer zone before, so I, I don't know what that means, but the, the rain garden that moved from the side to the back, uh, I just don't know what impact that will have because of my septic is 20 feet you know, below its lead. Uh, so I, I just want to bring that concern. And I, I don't know how the water Absor absorption, it's horizontal, vertical. Uh, I assume everybody calculates that. Knows, knows what all those things mean. Can you answer that or help sure. to point that out? Yeah. Uh, actually, the. Can you see this, Henry? Maybe you want to. Um... Yeah, well, I can see it, uh, but I, I didn't understand the first point you made is, is uh, uh, over the buffer zone. What, what is it? Oh, okay. This, which, 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 where, where is the property? <coughs> He's in the back. He's to the back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's, um, there's two permits that the commission had issued previously on the property. One is for work within 100 feet of the wetland resource area. Um, that would be the order of conditions for any work within 100 feet of the wetland across the street. Uh, and then the second permit that they issued uh, was a stormwater permit for the uh, stormwater measures that were proposed for the house. So there's really two right. separate permits that we're talking about. The, the buffer zone is the protection area from the wetlands to the property. So there's a okay. 50 foot from the wetland and then a 100 foot. Okay. So this comes into the 100 foot. But the piece that they're altering in that buffer zone is a very, what they've proposed rather than a straight driveway coming in is a slightly arcing driveway. And so there's a very small corner out towards the street. In right. terms of impact on your property, that would have no significance. Right, I understand that. The, but the rain garden. But the rain, why don't you point out the rain garden? It's to the uh, rear of the proposed garage. Uh, the base of the rain garden is at elevation 28. We have an existing elevation 34, so it's going to rise up six feet to its property line in that area there. There's a little bit less height in this area here. We're about elevation 30. Um, but even so, we're, we're containing everything within an infiltration area right behind the garage there. Where was, that, where was that rain garden going to be before, Rick? It was going to be roughly in this area here where the uh, garage is proposed now. 
So, so if that close proximity to what was but but if if it was in that prior location, would that water tend to go more towards Indian Trail or more towards the back? Still be heading towards the back. Can you see that? Yeah. So as essentially, this rain garden has been shifted a little bit closer towards your property, but it's still on that down gradient side. Did, did it get enlarged at all? It did. Yeah, it's about twice as big as what it was. And the interesting thing with these rain gardens is that we did the analysis really based on the crushed stone reservoirs below the driveways, below the garage, and the rain gardens were really a supplement to that. Uh, those weren't actually included in the initial uh, analysis. Those were something that we added that the commission thought they provided additional measure of protection. Um, I and mean, we're not geologists or hydrologists, so I can't tell you what's going to happen oh, oh, when, when this is altered. We have to look to see how much that water can be contained, um, where the runoff goes, and, and then what measures they can do to mitigate that. And we have a criteria for that which they're meeting. And really, we're attenuating volume here, which is about the most conservative thing that you can do. Um, so we're literally letting about half the water go for the post-development condition in that direction than is currently heading there in the wooded condition today. Is the siltation what, during construction, what do you have? For, um um, we actually did not propose any siltation fence along the property line there during construction. But I think that would be a, a fair condition. Yeah. And that would be very easy and inexpensive to install to provide some protection during construction. Would you use like a silt sock or, or hay bales or? Uh, we'll be getting away from the hay bales. The silt sock right. is a little less expensive. It's right. a little bit it easier. It seems to, to almost work a little yeah. better. This would be during the construction period that have a, a sock, you know, you've seen them before, so that any road, anything that happens, it rains or whatever while they're doing that. It's going to keep that, or hopefully slow that silt down, or things heading towards your. Are you going to put it on the backside too, between between your property and his? Uh, that's what we were just offering. Yes. Oh, oh I thought yeah. you were talking about the side. Okay. No, I, I would say very similar to what we did in the front would make the most sense to basically wrap the corner here, <coughs> and probably a small piece just right in this area here. Where it cuts back to the ledge. Where it gets down below that elevation, 36. Right. Are you building it on top of the ledge? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's not, you're not going to blast or anything at all? Or? Um, what we saw out there excavating the test holes, we don't believe they're going to need to blast. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Probably be some hammering, but I don't think they're going to have to blast. But no promises on that. But that's instead that's of one big bang, it's just a hammer going for about a month. <laughs> 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 I think I might take the blast. <laughs> and the house that he's proposing here is actually going to have le less impact with the ledge, too. The architect and Paul really went to Lawn Way in designing a house that's kind of stepping up with the ledge. He's not doing a basement underneath the main house. He's going to do a slab under the main part of the house, so he's going to have to let excavate really less ledge than was previously proposed. I was looking to uh, to try to see what is different between this garage and the garage that you had before that we approved. What 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 is? We had proposed a uh, garage under actually. So the house that was uh, approved before was a 64 foot lawn, 28 foot deep, um, with a garage under on this side here. So on that particular house there, we're putting a copper foundation of 46, uh, basement slab of roughly elevation 38. Um, so we were actually going to have to hollow out quite a bit of that ledge in order to get that foundation in there. Under the new plan, uh, that top foundation was changed from uh, 46 to 42.7. Basically, we're going to have to take off the high part of the ledge here for about six feet at the top. And then we're basically at grade. And then the garage is going to step down where the ledge is a little bit deeper here. It's going to be down at about elevation 36.5. 
And he wants to actually use some of that ledge in this front area to transition to a bit of a entryway with that ledge exposed in that area. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to hollowing out the whole thing for a typical colonial with a garage under, he's really working with the topography of the ledge that's there. Yeah, a lot less work in this, it seems. Okay. Okay. One more question. Maybe you can just talk to later. Does the rain water get inspection so often? I mean, you know, we all know in any kind of reservoir over time it gets blocked, uh, blocked by nature, dust and stuff. So there is a there is a, uh, a post construction operation maintenance plan with the stormwater permit. Goes back to uh, monitoring. There, there, there's a annual re a requirement to provide annual uh, monitoring, annual monitoring reports to the command. And it's also a pretty aggressive O and M plan where the where the owner of the property quarterly annually are required to check the plants, check the soil, annually there should be uh, an engineer doing an, an analysis that it's still functional. I don't know how you, uh, if, if this is required of everybody, I'm pretty astounded, it's very, very aggressive, and I wonder how, how a commission can monitor it without remembering the annual reports. Uh, it's, a, it's, one, it's, it's one of those that we talked about before. How, how, do, how can a commission monitor every one of these rain gardens that are going through here? There is a requirement to do that, but it's up to us to be diligent to make sure we get it. I'll, I'll call you. I read this. That's a real When his furniture is floating. Yes. 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 We find the key on that is really to make it a part of the landscape. And this is in a location where it's going to be part of the backyard, and if it's something that people want to maintain as part of the landscape, it's going to be more likely to be taken care of. Right. Okay. We should send the old man plans to all the abutters. There you go. As we go along. Okay. Can we close this? I make a motion to close. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. I know Mr. Petroselli is anxious to get his building permit signed off on. Is there anything that be, can be done to help expedite whatever he needs at the building department? That would be greatly appreciated. We, um, we don't have any orders. So they'll be at the next, our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Slip maybe that the building inspectors. Sends around that maybe could be signed off on. Mr. Petrosell came in the office today. <laughs> there, is, there is a sign off sheet between the Board of Health Conservation Plan for all projects that go through the building department. Um, I agree that what I could write on that, we can't sign off on it because the orders won't be signed until the next hearing. But what I could say is the Commission can close the hearing really without any issues other than what we've been in. Okay. Like I said, we went that far. And I mean, because you can start work on your septic and stuff that was already approved before. It's the changes that you have that we've got to go through. And of course, you're at the worry that you could get appealed. Right. Yep. And really, the, <laughs> yeah, the majority right of the work being outside of the buffer, I think the appeal would only apply to the driveway and the septic railway. So. Yeah. Right. So uh, the appeal isn't. It would be, yeah, just for these changes. So. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't forget your pre construction. Yes. yes. Before you start, your site contractor and your in, or engineer should be meeting with the agent and to review everything that's being done there to make sure that the people working on the site understand what they're supposed to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have two show cars, Pilgrim Paving. Anybody from Pilgrim Paving? I think we. I think. I 
I think we have to take the cognitive responsibility of them not showing up. I was on vacation last week, and I don't think the other agents reached out to them and told them there's a requirement for, me, for them to appear. All right. So I think. But they never showed it the last they time. Never showed the first, they never showed the first time, correct. I think they're just ignoring us. But, but, this, yeah, but this time, I think we have to take part of the responsibility. All right. I was away. So we'll, we'll make sure that they're notified to be here at the next. At the next time. Yeah. We will, we will send it directly to them. Okay. Um, ABC. ABC building. Get my glasses on. what all the issues are. I know one of them was the stormwater um, maintenance plan, the O&M plan, uh, which we have submitted a copy to. I have additional copies if you would like that. Um, and that's, a, that's an oversight on my part. We did submit it with the original drainage design that went to the planning board as part of the drainage calcs that we did uh, for them. And I mistakenly thought that it went to you folks as well. It, it did not, obviously, but you do have that now. Um, we did receive a copy of it. Okay. And as I said, I do have additional copies if you, if you need them. Um, one of the issues I know is the uh, location of the erosion control barrier that's out there now. Um, the current location of that is marked in red here, that's field located, instrument surveyed, and field located. Um, and there's a, a small area in here that encroaches into the 200 foot river front, and a small area that encroaches into the 50 foot no disturb. Um, and then this area, not enough has been cleared. Um, the original line, uh, erosion control barrier line, is shown on the plan here in juxtaposition to the, what's in the field now. So the red is what's in the field now? The red is as located in the field now, yes. Okay. Um, as you can see in here, there's a, there's a small area that, that is outside of the originally proposed erosion control barrier. Um, in this location, this is a 20 scale plan. That's as far as the 50 foot no disturbed zone goes, it's approximately three feet inside the, the 50 foot no disturbed area in this location. Um, and it's about probably eight feet inside the riverfront area in this location. Uh, the remainder, as, as I say, this really <coughs> has to go out further to accommodate the stormwater basin that's going to be going in this location. Okay. And the, the, the line actually extends out to almost to that wall, I believe. Is all the silt fence in place now? Yes. It is. It is, yes. It is, I, I was sitting over here, so I didn't oh, know what you said. But could you clarify that again? The, the road, what is this line here? The red line is the field located line that you see on the ground today. So we located you, with, we, uh, with the silt? We located the silt sock, yes. Could go with this? No, it no, is there. No, that's no, where it is. The red it is, is the field location. It should go in this heavy of this hay bale, what's indicated by a hay bale line here. It should, it should go there, and this is where it is. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I thought it was, it's only about 30, I, I paste it off, it's only 35 feet from the wetland. But the, are the, no. are the yellow flags, the, the yellow flags that are, that are, the yellow flags that are, uh, There's a, well, there were some flags that were out there from Marabito when he was out doing the survey for the adjacent property um, oh, okay. that I, were I still there. The that was, yeah, there were some yellow flags but there. This, this none, line, none, of the, none of the yellow flags were marked. No, those were, because we marked, I know that Shane marked all the flags because we, you know, we went over it on the plan. 
This is the line that we filed an ANRAD for. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're in compliance with the setback from that agreed upon line, from that approved line. I don't know what okay. the yellow flags are. It, it yeah, that's like there was a ton of flags out there from, from way back so before yeah. we even set foot on the property. So, Jim, the black line is where the sill fence was supposed to be installed. Yes. Okay? Yeah, this was, this was, and then... This was missing. Right, so they've installed all that. That's done. It's in now. I'd like to, yeah. It's in now. Yeah. It's in now, yeah. Okay. But it was not, it was not when I did the site. Right. And then there's just, where the red line is, it shows that, that they're about three feet into the no disturb area. I mean, it's a small piece right in that corner. So, I, I mean, the, the sill fence is essentially in the spot where we agreed to have it placed. And in fact, at, out by 3A, we didn't cut enough. They haven't removed enough material, which they're going to have to do to build right, that. For that pond, for right. the detention yeah. pond. Yeah. And, and your name is? I'm David McDougal. I'm the excavation contractor. And uh, I'm the one who uh, cut the, the path for that sock to go in. And I just kind of, you know, it was a, for me, I've been in business 10 years. It was one of the most difficult to follow. And the, you couldn't, <laughs> you, you can't even walk it through there. It was cutting your way through and it's not like the sock went straight I mean we're trying to pull tight you know it was it was tough to follow the the stakes over through the thicket sure so it was difficult I thought I mean like you see we didn't take enough down and at one point you know we we're over the line right you know it, it was just we were thought we were connecting two points and it just that's just what became our path I mean, straight in the woods to how it is on the planet. Kind of in any event, it was. But a, it's not far off. It was not no, far. It's, not. it's difficult. It was difficult. It was a difficult job. To but do. the other silt barrier has been the, the the section that was missing, and, and that's that's been put in. Actually, we brought that right to the stone <coughs> yeah. wall, correct? Yes, it's I act, there's an additional 30 feet from what is actually approved on the plan that wraps up. But that we just took right up to the stone wall, so okay. there was no question. So there, so there were so there were three there were three issues with the with the, yep. the, the, the stop work product. One one was the silt sock. Yep. The missing by the silt sock, that's in now. Yep. The other one was the O and M plan. Uh, the post construction O and M plan that we didn't have which we now have. Right. Yep. Um, the, I think the last issue is the stabilizing the entrance, which was a requirement of both the conservation commission and the planning board. And it's, and it's not. So that's still that's still an outstanding issue. Do, was there anything and, and just as a just as a courtesy, and this is a courtesy, that I talked to the planning department today. You haven't had a pre-construction pre with them yet. You have to sign it. They're, they're all set for the 20th. Oh, We've okay. already got that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what was my next one. Are you going to be there on the 20th? <laughs> what day is it? That's Monday, Monday. Next Monday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are we allowed to install the construction stabilization entrance before the 20th? Um, would you have a problem? Because we have the we have the extra silt protection on site right now. From, from the conservation commission standpoint, I'd like to see you stabilize the, the entrance site immediately. But the planning board, you haven't had the pre-construction of the planning right. board. That's where your issue is going to lie if you're doing your work. From our standpoint, we we'll just as soon see you do it. If you can get a, it, it, if, I, if I the know plan she, she had no. I spoke with her today. You know, it's this is every she has everything she wanted. She need she needed a bond check. She needed everything. <laughs> She's got everything that she needed. For the pre-construction meeting, um, and that was something that we, you know, nailed down today for a date. We have DPW there and everything else. I don't think that there's a big issue to go out there and throw a silt sock across. If if it's okay with the planning board, that's fine with us. And then just well, get with your meeting. I can check. I'll check with her tomorrow. I mean, Karen's away, or uh, Laura. Laura's away. Karen's in the office. All we can do is give our approval. Right. That's right. Yeah. From, from yeah. Standpoint, from our standpoint, go for it. Okay. When you said driveway stabilization, were you talking about like a gravel yes. strip, something yes. to yeah, like, a, like a gravel base, like a tire wash or whatever? But yes. like, yeah, to keep the silt from going out onto the highway. Onto the road. I just have I just have one question. Yeah. Sure. Like a gravel base. 
stone. Crushed stone, yeah. yeah. But wouldn't you put you, you, the no silt protection there? But you, you, you've got to have access. Yeah, but you're going to be able to pull it back and forth, right? Isn't that the, that's the gist of it? If they want that, we don't, I don't think we have. Because we haven't done any excavation work at all. I mean, we just, what we've done is just clear the trees. Yeah. So and that was what I had proposed in the, my letter. But I think the, I think the, I think the entrance, the entrance needs, needs the gravel base to keep all the silt from going out onto the road and then washing off into the nearby yeah. It's, it's I definitely that's something that would, that's it would, it's honest. our first thing on our agenda. Yeah. That would be to even access the site. So it's definitely something that we'll, we'll do this week. Okay. When you uh, got that red line on there that shows the, why doesn't it go all the way up to the top? Why does it just stop there? That was what was on site when we did the field location. Since then, they've, they've gone back at, I think, at the behest of the commission. Yeah, we, we, to I'd just like to see where the new silt sock went because when I was on the site, it seemed to me that that top corner, either the ANRAD was way off or the cutting is way into the wetland because right on the edge of that woods, there was a section where I saw trampled skunk cabbage, cinnamon ferns, and jewelweed, which are all obligate species. So it appeared to me that there was something that happened cutting either either the ANRAD was wrong or the trees got cut down further into the wetland than they should have been. If, if I'm well, not mistaken, yeah, this, that, this curls up this way. That's actually it not is. even, yeah, I mean, you can go have shingle We still haven't even located, cleared enough of that corner to even get that rear sock. Well, I saw that you put the silt sock in, and I'm talking about on the edge of where you cleared. Oh. what you were done with mm -hmm. and then there was missing silt sock and I saw that this week it was or the end of last week it was placed right and when I the, I was there before it was placed but I saw on the other side of where you p placed it a, a little depression just on the other side of your clearing that had a trampled skunk cabbage cinnamon ferns and jewelweed which are all three wetland species so I'm just wondering if that Either where either, was that? You look at that right that now, top, right by the lot two sign. Do you see where lot two is? See right where up the red there. line is now. Yeah, it's actually on this side of the silt sock, on on the upland side of the silt sock. Right now, coming through there. Right, 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 right there. there. I agree with right, you. right there. I was going to have. I was going to have. Okay, and then what we did is we took that straight up to the stone wall. It looks like it. That's what it, it was. A tram. I saw a trampled. Yeah, there was. I, and I, I know it's the same thing. I went out twice. I went out a second time just. To look. I actually went back twice too, just to confirm that that's what I had seen. <laughs> Is it a very small depression that no. would have those? It's not that small. Actually. No, and it seemed tied to the rest of the woods over there to me. I think it may have been overlooked. I'm not sure. I, I pointed it out at the meeting and was told that it wasn't such. Okay. Well, I have the same sentiment as you. I think it is one. Well, we have an approved Dan Rad. I know. I, mean, I know. That's, I know. And, and, we, and we had our own consultant go up. Okay. That was weird. there was a question on that from Paul said it wasn't. All right. Well, at some point, maybe you guys can get to go out there with Paul and satisfy your concern for that. If you can, next time he's in. Todd. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's. Well, why, why don't next time? We spent a lot of time at deliberating on that wetland hearing, and it. Right. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm aggravated. I am because something got screwed up. Well, let's. Why don't. When okay. Paul's going to be in, why don't you I will, give me a call and take a look and see. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. okay. In the interim, I'll have the engineer go back out and re and locate the rest of that additional silk sock and have it plotted on the plan. Just so, uh, that, you know. So we, I, are we in agreement that it's where? It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's actually it's on further a conservative, inside. It's, I, I don't see yeah. it. I don't see the need okay. to do that. The only thing I would bring up as a concern is, is if, as part of the grading or the construction of the house, if it were substantially inside, I just want to pull on the commission. It might get that, moved back. If it gets moved back, with, with, I think it might be wise to stake. I'm just going to have. Yeah, I think uh, this location what I would, as well. Yeah. 
what I would need was, you know, um, as far as getting construction going, not this would probably be weeks after we get going would have that the the sock move back. When you get into grading. When we get into grading, and then maybe have a, have Jim come back out show where you have located the, it, where the sock has to go back, and just approve the rest of the clear. So so I think what's you know, important. So now it wouldn't is be we, right now. We'll yeah. kind of ease our way into it. You as know. long as we have enough room to construct the, the basin, yeah. the maybe the foundations, and as you say, when it comes time for the grading, it may be necessary to push this back. I just don't want the commission to think that we're seeking yeah. the, the silt sock back. Um, we, we can stake it at that time, um, accurately stake it based on the position shown on this plan okay. of the, of the um, agreed upon erosion control barrier and not where it is now. Sure. Take it out. I can come out and take a look at it. Yeah, okay. that's we. Yeah, cause this time I think we'll stake the, the the section in the front there, and then we'll be able to finish that. So. Okay. Okay. We're good. Okay. We're good. Did, Great. Did, 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 Thank did, you. Did the plan? Did the planner ask you not to do work until we have free construction? I mean, we, we'll yeah, no, when I spoke with her, we, I just said we, we weren't going to do anything until the 20th. But if it's a matter of throwing, even just going up there and throwing a row of hay bales up there for now, temporarily, I don't think that they'd have a problem yeah. with that. You know what I mean? Which you can do. So until we have the meeting on the 20th, and then when we come in on the 20th, we can go ahead and put that uh, apron in, the crushed stone up front, and before we you know, even start to, to stump the lot. Because so. you won't have any truck traffic that will generate We can't get in there. I mean, we've been parking anyway. over at the ball field. <coughs> There's no way to get into the lot right now. I mean, it drops off. There's right. no way it's coming up there now. But. Okay. So, I'm gonna put that, so I'm, am I installing the sock in the front? I mean, the uh, hay Just bales put, in the front? Put a line of hay bales right across the front. Yeah. Okay. And that, okay, for that, now. For and now. Just now. leave it so until we until, until we further notice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yep. No. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You got my note on the uh, that the uh, twenty over the portion of the you have that one there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have some orders and conditions. Um, anything else? Yes. Something very important. Sure. You no longer have a second day tomorrow. Really? Friday. I was just informed. I was just informed today. About midday today, actually. Okay. All was let go. All right. The lack of funds. Although I did put in the budget funding for the full year. The reason was lack of funds. Huh. But he's gone. He's still he's still working as as independent environmental on the projects that are ongoing. What about my dam? Oh, give me all the files, please. <laughs> I don't. I wasn't here last week. I don't know what. I'll, the, I'll, I'll know call what him and I'll is. call Jason. Okay. I'm not sure what your schedule is, but I guess you need to get me up to speed. I, yeah, I got to get up to speed. I, was, I wasn't anticipating him leaving now, nor was anybody. I don't think. No. So. Huh. So we have a halftime agent. to be increasing like very soon like maybe tomorrow <laughs> I don't so know like I three quarters time the word, the word actually sure. the word actually came through Carol I got the word act like in fall. Or fall. We, you learn all the good stuff on the street yeah exactly <laughs> okay so, why don't we have a good consultant huh so we do have that's your volunteer yeah we do have some other agent reports if you want to Sure. <laughs> so we've, um, we've, um, Carol and I were talking about a, 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 a condition, um, and I think this EBC site on Chief Justice Cushing Highway really hit hit home to me, of clear cutting. Um, my uh, my suggestion would be um, to keep as many trees as possible within our jurisdiction on these sites, and still accommodate the development. Is this, you know, so we're talking about a 100-foot buffer zone. 
in the 100 foot buffer zone, what we're finding is everything's getting clear cut and then they're coming and mitigating with plants around, you know, wherever we want them to be. Yeah, is the there a necessity to clear cut? So uh, my suggestion is, is it possible for us to keep as many trees as possible on a site within the commission's jurisdiction and negotiate with them and still allow them to construct the building? Frank, you might have an opinion on that because you're a builder. But, but do you have to clear cut well, every site you go into? No, you don't. And sometimes it really, it helps the site to have mature trees remain. I mean, it keeps the scale of the houses down and all that. But it depends on how much of the site is being altered. You have to look at how far the roots go and and all the other grading that has to be done if you're so so it can be difficult to keep trees but I think it I mean, big trees are expensive so someone would it would be to their benefit to keep some large trees if possible although if you recall one of the articles I brought in or sent out um, they're actually promoting replanting of smaller trees that you know environmentally the, the larger trees don't do as much right because more sun gets you get Open the canopy. Canopy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I, I think keeping the site stable and not clear cutting and dozing everything, I mean, that site was, there was a lot cut there, all of, and it just happened so quickly. You know, you have some mechanized equipment that comes in and they, and they do all that cutting very quickly and people are surprised to see so much open up. Right, because there was, you know, there were some 12 to 24 inch trees out of our jurisdiction, but up along the border between the other person's property. Right. There's nothing there anymore. The houses are just completely bare. If they had just kept maybe three trees, that's what sort of sparked it. Now, we don't have jurisdiction on that upper reach. Right. But in the 100-foot buffer zone, maybe we could just have the contractors say, you know, other consultants, are there trees that you can, that you can leave on the property and not clear cut? Well, maybe we want to just look at that individually. Um, and and be more specific about requesting the trees stay. It could be part of the mitigation for working in a buffer zone is to leave m more mature trees that are outside of it. And, and, and just you know, leave it up to the leave it up to the consultant to tell us which ones which ones could remain and which ones they think need right. to be taken down. And in in other there. situations, we've done that. Remember, out on, on Glades Road, we were very yeah, meticulous yeah. about the trees that we wanted to have. Well, and you right. could put a condition, even though it, it, it to, you know, to the extent to, to minimize the number of mature trees cut. And then, like you said, on each project, you can be more specific. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was one. So we were thinking of just putting a condition in, you know, mm -hmm. remove as, true, as few trees as possible. You just give us a plan on which ones can stay and which ones can't. Well, I think that should be something we bring up each time with, yes. with these people. Yeah, you have to, yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, that's good. The other thing is um, on the, uh, this is a project, I just, we, I think the commission is, who don't know about this, do need to know about it. Frank and I and Todd did go out, but um, at the uh, Stockbridge Grist Mill on Country Way, mm -hmm. um, the Grist Mill was built in 1650. There are some trees around the grist mill that need to come down for safety purposes so that if they do go down, they're not going to destroy a, a, a facility that was built in 1650. However, um, there's a park being proposed there that went through an RDA through the commission and was approved through an RDA, uh, I think, a couple of years ago. The RDA didn't, didn't show you the number of trees that were going to be removed because I didn't think they know at the time. But there's 20 plus trees in the in the in the in that small area that are proposed to come down. We did do a site visit, and Arborist did go, did go out. So they're designing the park now, but I think you need to be aware that there's, there's uh, at least, there's more than 20 trees that are gonna come down in that small little area next to the grist mill. So I would anticipate we are probably gonna get calls. How can you allow these trees that are in the 50-foot buffer zone to come down to build a park, a public park? But you approved it already through the RDA without, well, without knowing. Well, what we, I think, Jim, though, what we did do is, is we, we gave them an RDA to do a, a walkway around in this area and then <coughs> uh, come back to us with a plan, which they did. And they also had to go before the ADA. They couldn't, the, the ground, when they did the rotary, they created a parking area um, just south of the, Grist mill. And so what happens is school buses, groups come in, park there, and then they lead people through the mill. 
but there's so many people that it takes a while to get them all to the mill. So, and, and the president of the Historical Society, Dave Ball, is a retired teacher. So I think the plan was pretty good that they'd be able to take the kids in a, on a path down along the Herring Brook and then back up the, the brook that um, runs under the mill as, as a way to keep kids busy and off the street while they're running them through the, through the mill. Um, they asked us to come out and take a look and, and see if we agreed with cutting of the trees. At first they wanted to remove a lot of them. What we decided to do was get the town tree warden, George Story, to come out and take a look at the health of these trees and if there were any trees in there that needed to, to be retained. This is some elm trees, American elms, that George felt strongly should not be cut. And then there's some Norway maples, which are invasives, that should come out. They also want to make sure they take down some trees and get some more air and sunlight into the roof of the mill because it's growing a lot of moss and it's, it's not doing the building any good. And their, uh, their concern is for their, their building and preserving the building and they already just put a lot of, of money into that building. But, but there's still a, a, a fair number of trees that need to come down or that they'd like to come down to work into this park. And um, you know, we could go back out there and say, you know what, we don't want all these trees taken down. You know, they've, they've had a couple of arborists come out and say, we think these trees are good trees, bad trees, these gotta go. Some of them they have to remove with a crane because they're up against power lines. But if we wanna, like there was that large maple in the middle that we suggested that they save. Um, the Norway, the Norway, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's a few of them that we felt that should stay anyways. and, and I. So we can go back out and say, you know what, this is too aggressive. Um, I, I'm not a good person to say, you know, how many trees should stay around those elm trees, you know, how many, how many should be left. Yeah. And that's why I wanted George to come out. Um, you know, he's been advising the town. He was the head of the public grounds for he's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know how many years. So he's got a pretty good handle on yeah. well, it. Was, it was a very good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. And just, and their letter with, um, the two people, I don't know that much about Newcomb, but I do know that Ab Abbott does some nice work and is a very, very knowledgeable guy on what trees could stay and go. Um, you know, he's been doing that a long time as well. And, and, and I'm, I don't know if, I, I don't think I, I don't think we emailed these to you, but there is a plan now. You didn't have this, you had this at the time. We just got this recently. That's the plan for the walkway. And there's at least, I think there's 32, there's 32 trees coming down. So I think you just need to be aware that it's, be aware that it's happening. And well, is it, if I'm getting I'm getting two different vibes. You're you're saying that it's a fait accompli, and you're saying that it's malleable. Well, we we could go back. It, they've submitted this plan. Can I just ask a question? Sure. When I was out there, remember I came back to you and I said some have gray tape, some have um, the bright orange or yellow. Well, I, I mean, I count, counted 10 of the bright tape, but there were 10 with the gray tape. The, the, yellow, ta the, the yellow tape that had the caution on it was yeah. ones that I put on with George Story that were not to be cut. Those are not to be cut. There was some, it, the that, there was tape and it's not gray, it was probably red or something that's been on there for so long. It's gray. Now. It's gray. Mm -hmm. um, Those are all the ones coming down? Well, Pretty much. No, well, they're not all marked. The latest report we got here has 29 has 29 X's, but I know there's at least three more that are not that are not on there that have to that have to come down because they're 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 leaning over onto the mill. That one so from I'd say the there's bank. at least there's at least 32 trees. That but are some of those trees are, are not that big a tree either. They're four. Or five. Some of them are dead, and some of them do yeah. need to come down. I'm not saying the, the arborists made their opinion. What I'm saying is, is this is within the 50 and 100 foot buffer zone. There's 32 trees. You know, when people are driving by seeing all these trees going down, they're going to be wondering. It's going to be a public park. Right, right, yo, okay. Yeah. I think it's a tremendous opportunity that will be lost if we don't ask to have some historic trees planted there, given the fact that that crane inside the grist mill is 350 years old out of white oak. It's never been treated, and it's in mint condition. And to not highlight that would just be a huge loss to the town to say this is ecologically what was here that provided them with this tool 
So. Well, I think there's a few things that hopefully they can add to this. Um, I think I sent an email out to some of you just wondering if we want to include some, over time, um, get some information out on like the Herring Run and all that sort of thing. I mean, this is the, the head of the mm -hmm. Herring Brook. Yeah. And uh, I was up in Weymouth and they got a great park that yeah, talks all about Herring oh, yeah. and, nice. and the run and, and all that. Um, it's really nice. Yeah, there will be this, there's several kiosks that are proposed. Right. But we want to, I, th I think this, that's, you know, all the effort that's gone on with North and South River to protect this, making sure there's water flow, we're looking at the, the um, fish ladder, there's a whole bunch of different things. And this is right where it's happening. So we want to make sure that that, hopefully we can encourage the historical society or maybe we can participate, we can look into doing some of this, look for some CPC funds or something else and add it to the to this park, you know, and, and you know, yeah, their interest is in preserving historic buildings. Right. You know, not necessarily um, preserving or, or understanding all the different environmental impact right. pieces. You know, when still. they built that mill, they were flattening New England. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah. there's a little different mindset going on. It's a phenomenal treasure. They are they are under a, a, a tight time frame to do this. They have an Eagle Scout who's making the kiosks. Yeah, but I think they've the kind of. Money. I talked with him a little bit about that. And I think they can. The, he can. You know, they have to have that Eagle Scout project done by the time they're November, I think. before they're eighteen or something yeah. like that. November. So he can do his pieces up near the street, especially if they get rid of some of the trees up near the road. He can get his kiosk and some of those. And then some of the signs that might go further down in the park, he might just have to make them <coughs> installed after some of the work that's done. Because the other problem is, is that there's a big water line that runs just behind the grist mill that's in really tough shape and the DPW would like to replace it, but they don't have the funds right now to do it. And so talking with the Historical Society, if they go in to replace this line, they're going to eat that park up. You, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, to dig and put in coffer dams or whatever they're going to have to do to hold that water while they put that line in. It's already got a sleeve on it too. Oh yeah, there's a, a couple of sleeve, patches. And it's impeding the flow of the stream. But they'd love <laughs> to see. They'd love to actually like to see that water line get lowered a couple of feet because, it, it, like you say, it's pretty steep. That would be good all around for the, yeah. flow, for the stream flow and the sedimentation. So hopefully. All the, those entities can but work Is, is this what has been approved? I mean, you guys... You, you, you didn't have that plan when it was approved. You had no idea how many trees were coming down. So we, could, we can go back out there and say, look, we want to save another 10 trees or something. You know, whatever, you, whatever we think is appropriate. Uh, um, okay. Or have some trees planted if they feel necessary to take those down. But that, that might be a better choice only because most of the trees that they're talking about removing, if not all of them, are, are Norway maples. Then they, all Norway maples should all get removed, yeah. I but think. And they're tangled, they're crooked, yeah. they're not, I mean, they're like, it's yeah, a I mess. Mean, well, they're, 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 they're not a native tree, so right, they're they're not not native. Native. get rid of those mothers. But whether we want to take them... They count as a removal. <laughs> <laughs> So we don't know which ones are the Norway, Norway maples based right. on that plan. Correct. But the arborists did go up, but we don't know which ones are which. Well, I, I mean, I think that's important, and I think native trees should, uh, should well, be kept wherever possible. But that's why George was there, and with the exception right. of a few of the um, American elms, I think most of them are maples. I just wanted to make you aware okay. of some major construction that is going to, not construction, tree removal that is going to take place. And, um, and also, the, the last thing is the Conway School meeting is next Tuesday morning. We can only have three commission members. I, I think it was Frank, I think, I think you're going to attend, because yep. there, there might be a relationship to CPC here in terms of management right. funding. Um, I don't know who else is, but we can only have three members, because we can't have a quorum. <laughs> well. I, I said I would like to be there. You did. I know you did. <coughs> I, I need to know who. I'd like to. If, if okay. that's fine. I just the only thing I'd like to say: whoever's going to attend needs to plan to be involved in this program. Absolutely. Deeply involved in it. 
Um, not to say that other people can't as well, but um, what we're going to be doing is essentially looking at what they're proposing to do and question them about um, what, what they'll be doing for us, kind of clear up some of these issues, make sure they understand what we're looking for. Um, but whoever, whoever is at that meeting needs to be prepared to attend the follow-up meetings, and there's a, it's a fair amount going on with, with all of this. So it just... There'll be, two, there'll be, a, there'll be at least two public... public <coughs> but, you know, it's not going to begin until um, late winter or even early spring. Right. That's the, the process itself. But they will have at least two public m meetings to get input from all the users of, all, of the... Well, it's, isn't it my understanding that we haven't t given them the okay... No, we, have we not, haven't even no, hired. We have not. Right. This is yeah. them making a proposal, but at the right. same time, us making a, a clear what we're looking for, exactly. and then making sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, the ethnic inspector is right. This is just an exploratory discussion to ensure that they right. can provide what basically what we're looking for. Should those of us who who want to be involved uh, get together before that meeting? I don't think so. I think you don't think we can necessary. find that out. Okay. I mean. If anybody else shows up and they can't be recognized, if they want to wear a nose and glasses. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't write to invite the town planner. I invited the town planner. Somebody from CPC wants to come. We, we do want to keep it small enough because it's just, they're not on board. It's just a discussion to determine right. that they're going to give us a I'll, I'll let Lisa plan. know that. I think she knows it anyways, that we're, we're going to be talking yeah, to them. Yeah, I did send out an email a while ago. But they do have example management plans on the on the on the Conway School website yep. that you can check right. out, and we do have the and Jim we, has we do, the we do have a black and white copy of the management plan for Carolina Hill and Marshfield that they did just last year. So. Okay. Um, I got a note from um, Howard Matthews. He is an associate <laughs> member that has been taking care of trails, and I should have had some photos for you guys. But what a great guy! He um, right after we had we had a little hailstorm wind event at the West End and uh, yeah. it took out quite a few trees and limbs and all that sort of stuff and he was right out there and uh, got it all cleaned up including a couple of pretty substantial trees and, and he has uh, his little uh, like hand saw that he backpacks out there yeah yeah and he's even got a chainsaw that's in no, chainsaw sort of a yeah. pack yeah. got a couple of yeah, different things like silky saw that he brings with him all the time yeah he does a ton of work out there that he doesn't get it's amazing and um, same thing at uh, Ellis, um, but he got around and reported right back on all the. So it's nice. He's done it really well. Yeah, the farm got well. We took a we took a, uh, a, a tour of, of the uh, Appleton field. Uh, Appleton field. Yep. Field. They got, they, he got the, the vegetables got hammered in that hailstorm. He lost, yeah. He lost a lot of crop. It was sad. It was sad, but he had all the ones that were damaged in buckets and said, I have to throw them away. Here they are. <laughs> Take <laughs> them <again>. home. <laughs> I was at the movies and the harbor. I came out and I never even knew what happened, except that you looked up and the sky was this eerie, it was the Batman movie. <laughs> you come out and everything's There you go. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Um, anything else on the, uh, so we just, we have orders. Frank, let me, let me go over sure. this. Just a second. I, okay. I had had uh, Carol put signs back on our agenda. Uh, you should, everyone should have seen um, on email um, the, the sign that I'm proposing and we talked about two weeks ago um, uh, to put up at, uh, out in the West End, also put one, uh, at least one down at Driftway. Um, unless anyone has any changes they'd like to make on this thing, um, I would work with the uh, with the printer to 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 highlight the important areas um, and to get this thing done and get them up. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, I I just thought that as we. Is there any way that once you're done, before he actually prints them, that you can shoot us a proof? Like, well, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you pretty much have the proof. Okay. All right. You just have to put that email. Yeah, it yeah. Can, with the email, right? But I can. That, we can do it again. 
No, if, I, I if mean, you if you, as long as you're not, you were just saying you're going to change some stuff up a little bit. Or um, the only thing I'm going to do that, that I saw on it was we have, uh, I think it says, welcome to the conservation land. We're going to put situate conservation land. Mm -hmm. That's the only change. And then probably highlight hunting is not allowed on Sundays. Target shooting is prohibited. Okay. And highlight that a little bit more. Okay. Now, uh, Carol brought up an interesting um, issue, um, a, a, which <laughs> I didn't realize that we ever even had discussed. But uh, she says that um, we do not allow people to put signs up on trees. Um, and um, sign. what's that? Not DEP signs. Well, if we're going to, I mean, we have to think about that. But, I mean, you can use aluminum nails and, I mean, some, well, there's some safe what ways. Does is that uh, yeah. When he goes out there, he always has his wrench. It's like a 916th wrench, and he, like, loosens it a little bit every time so it doesn't grow into the tree. So it's really not affecting the tree. These are the yeah. trail markers. Yeah, yeah like trail markers. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the PVC. Right. Um, I mean, we can, we can address this issue later. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be putting up probably 10 of these things. I think we could get some aluminum nails. I mean, the, the worry about steel nails is if the trees were oh, cut and sawn, you know, it yeah, be right. dangerous. Right. But. Okay, as long as that's not a big issue at this stage. And the signs, the sign will be probably, unless anyone, again, uh, has a different opinion, be about that wide and about that high. Right. Okay? Good. Good to Great. go. Looks good. Thank you for your help. Oh, the great effort. Oh, you, know, you worked your ass Massive out. effort. Oh, oh boy. You worked hey, did we, out. um, I just noticed the Etrusco, is that not on, with, is that next meeting? I think this is at, uh, hunting hunting. I, I don't know. That was next meeting? Yeah, he just brought it in. Discharge okay. of firearms within uh, 100, 150. Okay. In RDA for the, I don't know, like, be specific. Uh, um, so orders, do we? This is well, no, but no, because. Can we go through those orders? Yeah. It's hunting. Like if you yeah. walk in 50 feet from a house mm -hmm. with a shotgun, is it duck deer? The Duffy? Gun warden doesn't say, Duffy. "Oh, that's okay." As long as you don't Anybody pay have any? Um, You're not supposed to be even hunting. Yeah. Near the, yeah, I do. This is but this is try. the wording it's, that the state has. Um, is it? Well, sorry, let's, is it exactly. Can we get going on this? It's nine. Yeah. It's after yeah, nine. Yeah, we're going. Let's go. Sorry. Twenty-one. Let me look at it. All right. Put down a revised plan stating the type of driveway replacement. Should shouldn't that be pervious driveway? Yes. Well, I thought we made that. that. I thought I, we made they're, that. They're I thought we made that. Want to do the high talk. We made it clear to them that wouldn't be. It isn't clear on. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Um, what was number? What number? That was number four. This is the sign that they have on uh, Wampatuck. And then. Um, we did make that very clear. To them. Very clear to them. But okay, we can put that. Well, I understand what type that. Of yeah, but yeah. we need it in the condition. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. They're gonna have a problem. I'm afraid. Um, on 442, I, this is just my feeling, I don't know how anyone else feels, but I do, do believe that we told them they had to get a letter saying, saying it was all right for them to have their wall there because it is town property, that's not their property. And we did mention that, unless I'm imagining No, you, yeah, we, we did. So that should somehow be stated there, we need a letter from DEP or somebody saying it's all right for that stuff. Not DPW. DPW, I know. Oh, uh, the infamous letter. Maintaining the wall, the maintaining the wall, or yeah. rehabilitating the wall in places. Because it's on town property. It's not their property they put the wall up in. Let's talk about um, that. The other thing is. How about, how about this? Right now, until we settle this, we say approval. We put in the condition approval from DPW. I don't care. But well, I'm just saying, you're creating this problem when they're saying they're not going to write letters and you keep writing conditions that say you need letters. You say approval. Okay, I like that. I'll go and talk to the person. Right, you can talk to them. We can get a letter. It, it just says I approval. I mean, because I just assume they don't approve and they have to take the wall down. But if they do, they do. Um, I, I don't like the four-inch cap. I don't know why it has to be four inches. Why can't it just, just be two inches? Four, four inches, that's fine. Hunk of, and I don't even know if that wall will hold a four inch. <laughs> well, if they repair it, it would. Well, I don't know, but why? Why so wide? 
they ask for a cap this on it to help stabilize it. I understand that, but why not a two inch cap? That's all I'm asking. I think that if they put any cap on it or raise it at all, they should have to designate a certain area of their lawn as a no mow because they, they're in. There needs to be some mitigation for raising that wall because four <coughs> inches is a lot. I mean, if you add four inches to every seawall on Hummer Rock, that's a lot of wall. Not a seawall, a retaining wall. A retaining wall to protect their septic system. We don't even know if the septic is there. That was just verbal. Oh, there. Right. Hmm. I believe the consultant that it's there somewhere. So, it's probably you in the river. The cap, or do you want to eliminate it? Like we can change board it? I would like it smaller, but it's up to the rest what, of the board. What number is that? Um, that's number 42. Approval, approval from DPW is 42. They're, they're both the same. Existing wall can be repaired, but shall not be raised. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Only a cap. Those are the only ones that I am. Um, so pending DPW approval of the repair of the wall. So if, if you get DPW approval, then you can repair the wall, and we're going to allow them to add a four-inch cap. No, a two-inch cap. Two-inch cap is that? Are we? Do we have a consensus on that, or? We don't even have to give them a cap if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they need a friggin' cap. I don't know. They requested I just, an 18-inch addition to it. We commission said no. And they said, how about a cap? And I, I just assume the snowplow takes it down with this one. <laughs> right, let's look. What are we gonna do? Somebody. What do you even need a cap for? I don't know why they need a cap. She, they, the reason they said they wanted a cap was because it would help. S the top of their wall is held together with cement, like in between the pieces of flagstone or whatever it is. And they were there saying if they put the cap on, it would help the wall stay together longer. That was well, their that's true in every situation. Right. Yeah. Right. So is that true with my wall? And I make a motion right. for no cap. Does anybody want to second it? Well, I don't even think you have to make a motion. Just well, I'm it's just, not going to be well, part we of the. You have to decide. You suggested nobody opposes it already, John. Yeah. Okay. No, no cap. No cap. Okay. I'll go ahead, cap. Okay. And I think the rest of it you put pretty much covered. Um, I don't. My concern with this project is, I don't really know if she's going to do the work. Work. But I feel as though we have to have some way to make sure in the next month all the garbage gets out of the yard. I'll volunteer to check. I, I mean, but can we, because that is a detriment to the whole river if that stuff ends up in the river, all that junk. Well, the whole project we got to keep. I, I go by there a no, lot. No, I'm but not. I mean, yeah, yeah everything, I'm not picking saying up the that. Rubble, but the, the plantings, the plantings, the whole thing. If it never gets planted, I don't really care. I want. Well, I do. Though. Well, I, but yeah. don't you understand? Mother Nature will somewhat take care of that, but you have to get all the clippings, all the brush out of there before it ends up in the river. I don't think the plantings are going to, that's just my feeling. Mm. I could be very wrong. We haven't put a time frame on it. I mean, I right. A time frame for the clean, clean up, at least. Within, within X number of, what's reasonable? Two weeks, three weeks, a month, one week? A month. What's reasonable? A month I'd is say fine. to get Should be all the up brush. In a month. So yeah, 30 months days. for the clean up. 30, 30, yeah. 30 days to get all, right, all that brush out of work. there. Okay. What did, what did they say? I'm sorry, what, I may not have been listening. What did, what did we say about the driveway? Pervious has to be pervious material. If they want to repair it okay. or replace they want to it, put it's got to be yeah, I know. Yeah. pervious. There's, there's two sections to the there's two sections to the driveway from the road. One section here and, and a separate section here. They're taking the top section out and and, yeah. and revegetating that area. They wanted to asphalt this. The commission said no. It no. has to be of a personal right. nature. Okay. As long as that's that was my big bugaboo. Yeah. And it said in there also that the plantings would be done before any other construction, including the wall and the driveway. So they technically have I to do the plantings. It's, a, it's in They're there. They're going to do the plantings All right, now. I just missed it. <laughs> yeah, it's in there that the plantings <laughs> should be yourself. done before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's something we should consider. You know, I mean, there, there may be circumstances where, where people can't do that. But, you know, right. ACC always recommends 
to read mitigation plans for us, probably may not get them done. And but, you know, there may be circumstances where you can't do it, but it's right. something we ask. Right, but in this case, she was brought in here on an enforcement order because she cut down. She cut down the trees, the cedars, all sorts of stuff, all along the bank. Mother Nature put there. That's why she was here. I know. All so right, can we can we, we been, make her can we get that? off for of this one and just keep going here? I, I we had too many other things. Well, to the do rest now. of them are easy. This is the messy yeah. one. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, so I'll make a motion to accept the orders of condition with the changes we've just discussed. I'm sorry, Carol, yeah, sorry. but I just got back. Second. One favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Ma um, Marinelli? The Hope. wetlands delineation? Yep. I guess we just accept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We yeah. did. Yeah, that's fine. We don't have to motion that, nope. do we? Okay. Well, um, pardon me, Carol? I think you have to. I make the motion we accept the wetlands delineation on Hillcrest Road. Second. Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Kylie, 25 Rivers Street. Same. That was a septic. I saw no issues with that. Yeah. I make a motion we accept that one as written. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Kennedy, 3 Milton Street. That's the They needed the DEP. Yeah, we got the DEP, so I make a motion we accept the orders as written. Second. Aye. In favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, the two diamond, I guess we're going to do them. I make a motion. I'm the only thing I have to ask. I didn't get to read it fully because I just got back. <coughs> um, the letter, Stephen. Oh, no, we're going to deal with the letter you are. We could, maybe uh, we should, um, maybe we should. should just require approval. Okay. Could we put that in, Carol, at the end? Approval from D. I think it's in there. on the um, easement. Yeah, it was in there. I didn't I get to read it. Bro, is I'm, it there? I'm pretty sure I read that in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could have it. Yeah. Well, let's just make sure. Right. That was it was a letter, though, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can right. change just that to approval. approval. I make a motion. Somebody crumpled it up and threw it Okay. Okay. I make a motion to um, accept Diamond Development Lot 1 as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to accept Diamond Development Lot 2. You know what? You can't. You can't. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we're not doing Scott. All right, certificate of compliance. Gorm, lot two, 149 clap. No, no. I didn't, I didn't get to do that. Okay. I didn't know it was on the agenda. Right. I was on vacation last week. I came in and it was here. I didn't have a chance today. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Um, um, like a motion to adjourn. Let's see. What else? Second. Where? I, Jim. Do we need to bring up uh, the 214 clap to make them aware, or we're putting that on the agenda for the agents report next week? Is that how we're? 214, that's on. Where we met with the attorneys today? We had the meeting across the way. Yeah, it's very important. We met with the applicants.
suggest that I'd like to have three commission members, not four, but three commission members, to discuss what they're going to provide to us as possible. <coughs> Word. Enhancement or mitigation? Uh, but it's, it's mitigation to avoid mitigation uh, in a design that they would like to provide to the commission to discuss to forego um, court. For, for, for go, going to the whole legal. I mean, so they're going to provide something to us within a week or a week and a half for us to discuss. We'd like to get Paul, Paul from the independent, independent environmental who's out paid consultant on this to sit down myself, Paul, and three members to look at what they submit to us in a week or a week and a half. Just go over it so we can brainstorm it so we don't come in cold so that there's at least three commission members when we have the executive session who have already discussed it and can pass that discussion on to the commission members to decide whether or not you want to accept what they're proposing or modify it to try to avoid going to court. We'd like at least three, three commission members when that arrives. And I couldn't participate in that because I'm going to butter. Yeah. Yeah, I, as long as I'm, you know, not off with my kids somewhere, I'll, I'll be available. But we don't, when will we have a, some kind of time frame? Um, well, we'll, we'll go into an executive session for the next year. <coughs> okay. So they said they could have it to us. At the end of the hearing. Days before that. So I'm, so I'm, I'm suggesting we'll probably have, I'm suggesting we'll probably have it uh, on the 22nd or 23rd, maybe Thursday of the week. As soon as I get something, I'll notify three members of the committee. Okay. And then hopefully we can meet up and Paul to come up. Should it be three people other than me and Frank, or do you no, want? No, I think you're actually going to be there, yeah. 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 You're a key player. So, two other commission members. Um, I can probably do it. Okay. So, the executive session would be at the end of the next meeting. Yeah, I guess, yeah, before, uh, we'll have to talk about that, though, because if getting here early is a, an issue for those people as opposed to we're going to be here at the end. I'm just, so about, I'm just concerned about at the end, it's 10 o'clock, and it's going to be a very important discussion. It is demanding. We'll try to, we'll try to see if we can avoid those reports. When I get that, I'll contact Todd, Paul, and Kevin, and we'll figure out okay. when we can meet. And then I don't know if you guys have to decide whether you're going to do it before or after. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Let's go.